<laughs> Alright, hello everybody, it's me, Clock, and we are playing the kid at the back once again. We're going to be going for day two this time. Um, I also have a little bit to uh, redo from day one, because I'm actually missing a CG. <laughs> yeah, my bad. M my bad. My bad. Um, but uh, we'll go back right now to go get that um, missing CG that I was getting, and we'll just go from there, okay, into day two. Also, I missed this. I didn't click on it in the entire time. There was a green heart in the top right, and I thought it had to do with how much Soul liked me. So I didn't click on it or anything, but it turns out I was. It, it does have to do with how much Soul likes you, but you gotta click on it. And you'll get this. Yes, this is what you will get a scale. That's also animated. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, you will get a scale between the two of them. Between Crow and Soul. So, we'll be clicking that now. My bad. Um, let's force him to give up his seat. Okay. We're gonna be skipping a little bit. Uh, okay. Okay. Skip. Okay. So, we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. This is where we were past this. So, I actually cut off the playthrough right before the CG. So, I'll show you guys what you will get. So, as we go into the classroom, we're gonna skip this. Sorry. I would hit the skip button, but I don't think, uh, I'm pretty sure it'll, it won't show it to us. So, we read this in day one. So, make sure to watch day one if you didn't watch day two of the rewrite. Okay. This is version 2.3, by the way. Okay. Ever you noticed something, or rather someone familiar? This is new, okay. The very same tuft of black hair with green highlights sat at the back, and instead of his red novel that you've come to associate with him, he is now scribbling with a sketch pad. He didn't seem to notice your arrival. How come you've never seen him in class before? Is it because he's seated all the way at the back of the, room, the classroom? If that's the case, then he must have been really quiet, and you probably never got the time to notice him come and go. How odd, you thought. Make your way to your seat, not breaking your gaze at the tall, dark male. Once you reached your seat, you couldn't help but your growing curiosity at whatever he was doing with his sketch pad. Coincidentally, the desk right in front of him was unoccupied. Maybe you could sit there instead. Settling with that idea, you moved to the desk in front of him and placed your things down. He remains unaware of your presence. You sit on the chair facing the opposite direction as you casually place your arms on the backrest. So this is the CG one of the CGs we were missing. Look at the cute... Look at him. Look, he's so absorbed in his drawing. What is he drawing? Oh, he's drawing like blot tests. <laughs> Ink blot test. <laughs> I, I'm joking, but it'd be pretty funny if he was just drawing himself up some ink blot tests. Um, you observe the way he draws with his pencil. Each stroke he creates moves with so much elegance that you thought he was dancing with it. The face of a person dressed in peasant clothes. They seem to be dancing while a being larger in size was right next to him. You lean in closer, attempting to see what he's trying to draw. But was left startled when the book suddenly slammed closed, causing him to jerk back. You tilt your head up, and you meet eyes with the very same wide, reddish eyes of the boy back in the library. You give him an awkward smile and peace sign. He kept staring at you. Hey there, uh, sorry for that. Sorry for what happened back in the library. Erm. You're my classmate. That's a surprise. Hope we'll get along. Okay. Being caught in the act wasn't part of your plan, and now he's blushing. <laughs> Quickly swerving around, you are now properly facing forward, ignoring the burning stare of the male behind your head. <laughs> uh, you make your way to your seat. Once settled down, you groaned, placing your elbows on the desk and resting your chin on top of your hands, waiting patiently for your professor's arrival. Okay, so there we go. So we're going to skip ahead. So then there's one more thing we were missing, okay? Also, yeah, so now we have some points with Soul now. He's smiling now. He's happy. <laughs> Look how sad. Wait. <laughs> Wait, I'm kind of blocking it. Look how sad he is, dude. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, dude. That's so funny. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Crow. I'm sorry, Crow. Oh, man. That fucking made me laugh, though. I love how sad he is. Okay. Sorry, Crow. We're going to cover up your face. Yeah, we're going to keep covering it up. Soul rubs the back of his head. Okay, we're gonna skip ahead. Okay. Okay, I need to save here. 
I need to save here because this is also has two cutscenes depending on what you pick. But I'm pretty great at art, bro. Actually, I am, I'm actually pretty amazing at art. Yeah, I'm pretty great. So it gives a small smile. I'd love to see some of your works then. So, would you like me to draw my portrait first? Sure. Wait, let me get my things. To cut your sketch pad and charcoal pencil is soul relaxed on seat. So this time, because he doesn't have an injury on his face, he will let us draw him first. <clears throat> Would you like to see? Would you like me to pose or do whatever you feel most comfortable in? All right. This cool, edgy, cool, cool, edgy emo boy. Look at him. This is what I was missing. So I was missing this and the last CG. And, uh, he's a sassy baby girl. Oh, hey, hey, Daniel! Don't go to sleep yet. Come on, man. What are you doing under those sheets? Your eyes scanned his face. The more you look at him, the more you notice some of his features. His cheekbones, his lips with two piercings, his thick eyebrows, the way his hair settles down on his shoulders his reddish orange eyes. He's actually quite handsome. For a moment, you just stared at his eyes. You noticed and stared back. His pupils dilating before he realized he was staring. <laughs> he rises to his cheeks, quickly averted his head away, and you come right back. No looking away while I'm doing your portrait, pal. Look, we embarrassed him. We won the staring contest, chat. That's how we do things! Hey! Eyes on me! All eyes on me? S sorry, I'm not used to being. S uh, sorry, S sorry, I'm not used to being stared at for so long. Relax, it's just me and you. It's just me. Plus, you stare. You'll stare at my boring face after I'm done with your portrait. Your face isn't boring. I actually think you look beautiful. He says without even thinking twice. His eyes met yours, half lidded, and his pupils were wide. Now it's your turn to turn red. You hid your face behind your sketch pad and whacked him with your charcoal pencil. Stop saying stupid and s stop saying stupid and stay still. <laughs> Soul just chuckled and st stilled his movements. And on his chest and a smile on his face. Okay, gonna just do a little quick save, and then um we're gonna load back up. Okay, and I'm gonna go back. I I suck at art, bro. I suck. Everyone starts somewhere. Would you like me to draw you first, then? If it's not too much of a trouble. Just great clock. Just great clock. First time partnering up with this new guy, and you're already letting him do the work? I'm no better than those classmates of mine who would push their workload on somebody else. Not at all. Well, we'll let it slide this one time. With that, Soul takes out his own sketchbook and pencil, sitting upright and facing you. You straighten up your back, sitting properly as if you are about to take an ID picture. Uh, is this okay? Relax your shoulders. Feel at home. Expressionism is about expressing yourself. Just pose whatever you'd like. Oh, okay. Your breathing stopped. What are you doing there, bro? You dabbing? You, you doing a half dab? Dab. 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 No. No! Not on me! Not on him! You can feel Soul's hand brush along your forehead to your ear, tucking away a stray hair that was covering your face. Oh, thanks, bro. You can almost smell his mint in his breath. You were sure you were, sure you were bright as a cherry by now. Soul leaned back and didn't say anything as he began sketching, his eyes hopping from the paper to your face, and you swear every time you meet his, his gaze, your heartbeat quickens. You averted your gaze, Distracting yourself from his focus as you try to calm your beating heart. Okay. So, that- Okay, the class eventually came to an end as your professor was giving one last reminder to your class before dismissing everyone. One by one, everyone packed their things and left the classroom while some stayed and discussed more about the exhibit. Sadly, Soul isn't done with your portrait, which you were dying to see, but he said he's going to keep it a secret until he finishes it. You better not make me look funny. What makes you think of that? It's not like I gave you a mustache or something. What? Wh Let me see. I'm kidding. He didn't know what came to him. When he raised his hand to try and cup your cheek, he stopped midway, however, and tucked it in his pocket. Hey, yo! 
You're so pretty. Did you say something, Soul? Nothing. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna save there too. No. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so we'll save. Um, we already played day one, so I just wanted to get those two. Um, I just wanted to get those two things, basically. Um, so now we're gonna be picking up from where we left off. And I'm going to do Crow's route first, because that's the first route we did yesterday on the day one. So that's all the CGs for day one done. We've, uh, I can even show you. Here, let's go to the main menu. I can show you soul. Yeah, so now that's that's what we were missing. So we've got all the CGs for day one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I just wanted to clean up some of these uh, little things. So these two we were missing. And last one. Can't believe we were missing that much, bro. I... I feel kind of bad. <laughs> I, I feel kind of bad, bro. <laughs> but at least we got them. So now we just need to get the day two CGs and we got all of Crow's stuff. So. Mm. So let's return. And we're going to load up off of the day, the day off of the first playthrough with Crow. And this one is where we kissed Crow. Okay. So this playthrough is where is starting day two, and this is the playthrough where we yes, <laughs> yes this this is the one where we're heavily in in uh in Crow's favor. Okay, so let's see what happens in day two when we're pretty much dating Crow. We both confessed to each other. Uh, we basically both said I like you a lot, and uh, we've agreed on that. So we're essentially dating him. And Soul seems to be a little upset, but we still have some points with Soul. So we'll see what happens. Day two, the kingdom. <laughs> what happened the last few minutes? All I did was just pick up some CGs from day one we were missing. Uh, and then I explained what we are going to do. The following day, the first thing you do is to look around for Crow. However, when you try asking some students for his whereabouts... Nobody seems to know where you went. You tried sending him a message to his phone, but you never received a single reply, much less having your messages be put on red. We friend zone soul. To be fair, there's no other option in day one to not friend zone soul. You basically friend zone him no matter what you do. You eventually meet up with Brittany. She seems to be one of the few people closest to Crow, so it was best to talk about him with her. Jericho? No, I haven't seen him. Also, if you could avoid spoilers, I think the majority of people would be happy, okay? So please, if you've already seen Day 2, please, you know, keep it to yourself. Do you know anyone else that might have had an idea where he is? Brittany pondered for a bit, with a manicured fingernail on her chin before shaking her head no. I've already asked the rest of the guys. Heck, even Geo doesn't know where he is, and that guy's close to the hip with him. But he said he's coming to school today. Don't tell me he ditched last minute. Bullshit. He would always send me or anyone in the group a text whenever something came up. Heck, knowing that guy, he'd most probably send you a text first. You deflated. Brittany gives you a worried look, trying to think of something else that could possibly help you. Maybe you should try checking the council's office. Taking her advice, you thank her and proceed to leave the classroom she was in. Okay. You did as Brittany suggested, but much to your dismay and frustration, not a single one in the council knows where Crow is. Classes eventually start, but you didn't attend. Too determined to know where Crow could have possibly been, you rack your brains as you walk all over the school grounds. You were probably too angry to realize you made it all the way to the gardens, the place where you usually work. You scratch your head from frustration. Taking out your phone, you decide to give his number a ring. It was still dead silent. You decide to walk even deeper into the gardens. Until eventually you meet with a familiar chain fence, indicating the school's campus's borders, barricading you from the forest just beyond it. What what made us have the sudden urge to just walk around in the... What? You rang Crow's number one last time. Ring, ring. It rang a few more times before cutting off. You checked your phone. Thinking that he somehow finally picked up, but was met with a disappointing notification that it was out of service. You try one last time. It's out of service. 
There's faint ringing in the distance. But it's not within the gardens. It's coming from outside. Did he get himself lost? But how? As far as I know, this place is all bordered up. You putting your phone in your pockets, you look up and stare at the metal edges of the fence, shielding your eyes from the sunlight hitting your face. You bit your lip. You could climb up, but if you fall, you'd probably have a sprain if you're not careful enough. He's probably just got like a surprise picnic behind this fence. Without wasting any more time, you start climbing the chain fence, your fingers shaking from anxiety at the imposing height upon reaching the edge. Going over to the other side, you slowly make your way down, still keeping a tight hold on the fence. Whoa, fuck! That is, until you somehow manage to slip on your footing, causing you to fall ba down back first. Ah! Oh! The groan escapes your lips. Your back now aching from the sudden impact of the fall. My back! <laughs> Making you lie there and wait for the pain to subside a little. You pat down your pockets, reaching for your phone inside. You feel your heart drop to your stomach as you behold it. My phone! <laughs> I skipped it. You curse seeing the visible crack on the screen of your mobile device. Okay. Turning it on, you vomit another string of colorful curses as your phone screen glitched heavily before eventually turning dark. Man, this shit is useless now. Shoving your broken phone back in your pocket, you slowly got up to your feet. You looked around. If Crow was somewhere here, then you better start looking around. Hopefully you can try to remember your way back into the campus grounds. Help, I fall and can't get up. Where's my button? Your heartbeat accelerates as you walk deeper into the forest. You've never been here. It was uncharted territory, so you didn't know what dangers lurked. Okay, it can't be that far if we could hear the phone number, the phone ring. You scan the area around you, the thicket seemingly getting thicker and harder to maneuver. See nothing out of the ordinary, save for some overgrown bushes and vines crawling on the dirt floor. If these don't get tended to, someone will surely trip. You're about to give up your search when you notice something in the corner of your eye. Also, someone will surely slip. This isn't a garden, bro. This is the forest. What do you mean, attended? This is a forest. Sorry? Nature didn't, didn't trim itself for you? What? The familiar shade of Crow's indigo vest torn to pieces oh maybe we are about to see the yandere side of this game <laughs> you feel your heart drop the air suddenly feels suffocating your legs wobble their way to the torn piece hoping that it was some sort of hallucination or some kind of sick coincidence but no this is exactly crow's vest all torn and broken you search around the one area one last time, eyes keener than before, hoping that this might have been some kind of prank someone pulled on you, till your eyes land on a strange and broken down shed. Is that an axe? Excuse me, someone been chopping some wood? Clutching, clenching the torn fabric close to your chest, you hastily make your way to the shed. Thoughts of Crow invades your mind as you ignore all the warnings waving t to your face. Yeah, a couple red, red flags. The moment you came face to face with the shed, your nose picked up on something bad. The smell of iron. The smell of blood. You rattle the wooden door open. It won't budge. Fuck! Open up, motherfucker! You look around for something to pry the door open. An axe! Coincidentally, a lone axe was sticking on a tree stump. Gathering your strength, you pried it off its hinges, nearly knocking yourself down with it. Dragging the heavy axe to the front door, you swing it open, breaking the wooden door piece by piece until a hole forms into it. <laughs> Guys, kicking a door does not work as well as you might think it does. Kicking a door in takes tremendous strength, okay? <laughs> and if the, the door has more than just a just a door a regular door lock, <laughs> a doorknob lock, if it has any more than that, you're not kicking that shit in. <laughs> Clock's weak. I have actually kicked the door in. <laughs> and it's hard, okay? It's an old wooden door. <laughs> I I will tell you this now. A lot of doors are wooden. And a lot of doors last a long time. 
Kicking is better than punching the door. It is. And you have to aim for the doorknob. Because you want to aim for the lock. Because you ain't breaking the fucking hinges off. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm kidding. Smell is now... Well, I'm not kidding. That's real, man. Smell is now stronger than it ever before... Than it was ever before. Making you scrunch up your nose. With one last blow, the door falls. The shattered piece of wood now hanging by its hinges as you enter the room. You feel your soul leave your body. The strength in your legs disappears as you drop to your knees, the pool of blood staining your skin. The iron-smelling liquid's thick texture made you feel pure disgust as a shiver ran down your spine. Oh. No! No, 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 please! Please! God, this couldn't be happening! You want to rip your heart out of your chest. You want to burn this whole forest to ash. <gasps> wow. I actually really like how far the uh, the creator was willing to go to draw the blood. In the original Day 2 update, um, they didn't really draw much blood. I'm very happy with the, the horror side of this. Nice. <laughs> I know he's dead. Nice. Soul fans stay winning. <laughs> Before you lay Crow's corpse, his head is barely attached to his shoulders, and you can clearly see the gaping injury left by something sharp on his neck. Blood drips from the deep cut, the red liquid pooling around his lifeless body. His eyes were left open, and you gaze at them, wishing, praying, and hoping that his vibrant azure orbs would smile at you again. But no, his eyes remain dull, soulless. You mutter his name over and over and over, asking him to get up, to talk to you, to tell you what happened. But he didn't. You hear footsteps behind you, accompanied by the clanking of metal before something drops to the ground. Oh no, we got a clanker over there. You swiftly turn around, meeting the eyes of someone you never expected to be here. <sighs> a pair of fiery red orbs grew wide like saucers as their owner beholds your slumped Bloodstained figure. Ah, uh, you ble are you bleeding, soul? D did they attack you too? I don't fucking think so. <laughs> I love my boy though. Wait, was it? <laughs> hey, you think uh, you think I can still romance uh, Chrome? You think, uh, you think I'm, you think I could still romance him? Look at those fucking, uh, I love this. This is amazing. This, this is a very nice touch. Beautiful. Beautiful. His gaze reveals a mix of surprise, dread, and panic. Clock. Sorry. Clock? N no. You shouldn't be here. You need to leave. His pleas fell on deaf ears. Instead, you stare at the bloody hand axe that he dropped, his equally bloody hands and his dark shirt wet with red liquid. He reeks of blood. He killed him. He killed Crow. You killed him, didn't you, Soul? Soul bit his tongue, refusing to answer your question as he stays put. You can see the way his jaw clenches, his expression now filled with rage. He was going to take you away from me. I've only done something I wished I should have done years ago. So you're not even going to deny it? I would never lie to you, Clock. But why? Oh. Why did you do this? Because I love you, Clock. And I'm not letting that bastard take you away from me. You're mine, and mine alone. You were taken aback by his declaration of love towards you. It left a disgusting taste in your mouth. No, 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 no. No, it's good. It's chill. You know, we can still... We can make this work. Honest, I'm fine with this. I got a cat yelling behind me. Wow. <laughs> How dare he taint the word love. How dare he throw it around like it's an object. You monster. What? You lunge at him, aiming for his neck, and pushing him down on the dirt, 
ground. He claws at your hands, not expecting your sudden strength as you unbuckle his choker, pulling on the strap and using it to choke him. Oh. I didn't know I was into choking like that. But now I do. Hmm. <clears throat> you mean nothing to me. I don't even know you. You love me? I loved uh. him. He was everything to me. He was my savior, my first love, my everything. What do you know about me? You must pay for what you've done. Soul couldn't muster a single word as you kept pulling on the strap around his neck. Your vision fills with red as your desire to take revenge overwhelms you. <laughs> Chad, Chad. No, he did nothing wrong. Now Kith. I don't think that's where this is going, Chad. The strength in his hands weaken his soul loses air. And soon you felt something sharp. Oh. Something painful. You look down, expecting to see your successful revenge through your classmate's soulless face. But the light remains in his eyes. Instead, it is filled with horror. You cough. Blood seeps through your lips. You look further down and see <coughs> a sharp blade through your chest. Damn, we a twink for real, for real, chat. Look at that body. The object swiftly disappears after someone pulls it out of your body. Blood slowly gushes out of your wound. You feel someone push you down. A pair of hands moves your body. You couldn't care less as you stare at the dusty ceiling of the worn-out shed. Your vision slowly darkening. Oh, another CG? From the corner of your eye, you can make out the blurry figure of the man you've come to befriend the day before. That's a really good CG, though, honestly. A few droplets of something wet splatters on your cheek. He's crying? Clock, stay. No. No, please. Stay with me. Another figure enters your vi your fading vision, and Soul takes notice of them. You recognize the blade in their grasp as they wipe it clean of your blood. Your killer. Huh, who who's uh who did we see with a pocket knife earlier on in the playthrough? Huh. Soul gets into an argument with the guy, his muffled screams reprimanding them. You can barely hear the person's response as they calmly speak with Soul. Keeping your eyes open is getting tiring. Breathing is getting tiring. With one last breath, you flutter your eyes closed. And the last thing you hear are these exact words. No witnesses. Bad end! No witnesses! Damn. And I ag I would have agreed to be a participator. <laughs> Alright everybody, that's the kid at the back. Day two. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you had a great time with me. I know Crow did. At least Crow got got a little bit of a kiss, okay? How about that? At least Crow got a kiss. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Are you guys happy with that? Um... I <laughs> Two hours later. I couldn't kiss Crow without his death. Yes, I think if you choose to kiss and and get in a relationship with Crow, I think the the Yandir soul is gonna not let that happen. Um, so that's what happens if you do that. Um, I'm gonna pick up where we left off on this playthrough. I think this is one where I forget what this one was. But if I look at this, it's four and four, so I don't like this one, actually. So you know what, actually? I'm, I'm gonna scratch this one. I'm gonna do a fresh playthrough, actually. We're gonna do a fresh playthrough. Yep. And I'm gonna skip, and we're gonna pick all the options I wanna pick to get max, like, soul points. Because I believe I have to have, like, as many points with soul as possible to make it, like, good. So... Did I just hit new game? Oh my, did I? Okay, I did. I did. I did hit new game. That's my bad. That's my stupid. That's my stupid. My bad, chat. Yes. <laughs> okay, um. 
So I think to get max points, you gotta go to the library. You gotta skip ahead. Um, ask them to move away from your seat. Force them to give up a seat. I think that's how you get a lot of points. No? That didn't give us any points. Soul means brightness, right? So, saying that gives you two points. Pretty great at art. That's one point. Come on, just a peek. It's not done yet. Boo. You chuck the sketch pad in your bag before Soul will grab a hold of it. I guess he really wanted to see the sketch. That's cute. Uh, I'm trying to get maximum points with him before we go into the next. Just take his, uh, just take his hand. Does that make his, uh... No, okay. I know you can get a lot of points with him. I know you can get a lot of points with him. Uh, I don't. That's fine. That still gave me three points with him? Wait, wait, wait. If I load up... Wait, I'm pretty sure in the load we have, it's, like, better. Isn't it? What's this one at? Four and four. Is this the max you can have? I think you have to be have a love triangle. You do. Chat, technical difficulties. <laughs> Chat, technical difficulties. I'm pretty sure you can have, like, a really high score with him, but moving into day two. Like, you don't have to have it be this bad. I just have zero riz, true. Just zero riz chat, as per usual. Go to the library. With... You have to go to the library, I'm pretty sure. Find somewhere else to sit. Ask them to move from your seat. Just take the seat beside. No, no. Ask them to move from your seat. Okay. Is coffee a good one? No. Force him. Force him. Oh, that's good. I guess you can't get any points. What about this one? Ah, that's only one point. This one. And you get two points for picking that. Okay. Okay, and uh, we only got one. And I'm not that good at picking arts. Pretty great at arts. Pretty great at art gets you a point. I guess maybe that is the best you can do. Okay, never mind. Unless going upstairs is better, but I doubt it. Uh, take his hand. Stick his hand. I do, I don't. I'll say I don't believe in... Believe in God. And we're just gonna give him a big hug. A big hug! You don't get a lot of points for soul on day one. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. So, we're gonna move into day two now. With four and four. I It's an equal score. I think that's fine. Let's get some more points of soul. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. The one who loves. I was a child. She was a child. In this kingdom by the sea. More Edgar Allan Poe. Day two, the kingdom. Okay, we're going to go with this day. We're going to save here too. Because I don't want to lose my spot. The sun setting by the horizon colors the grassy field into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. Your ever-beloved home. The tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while they talked with your father. Your only family member left. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate with the people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time. I promise I can pay up. This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose this farmland. We've given you enough chances already, Mr. Works. If you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. Damn. Land sharks. The loud ringing of the school bell rang across the hallway, making you jerk out of your thoughts. Uh. Students came out through their classroom doors. You feel something shaking you awake. You sat up and met face to face with Crow. 
Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. You let out a yawn. You rubbed your eyes as you looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats as it is now lunchtime. What? what did I miss? Nothing important. Though if you're having doubts, I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks, Crow. You're a lifesaver. Anything for you, Clock. You recalled the little dream you had. Quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch. Popping a few joints before you got up and went out of the classroom with Crow in tow. You know what? We've been streaming for an hour. I think that you know, the game just called for a stretch check. So let... Come on, everybody. Do a little stretch for me, okay? Mm. That's that good stuff. Ugh, I love popping it. Ugh. Yeah, make sure you finish with some good posture, okay? Sitting up straight. Feet flat on the ground. Arms level with the table, okay? And if you're not sitting at a desk, then I don't know what you're doing. Lay down, lay down decent. Make sure your head has some, uh, something to hold up your head, okay? You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch, okay? With Crow in tow. You met up with a, with your group of friends, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers. Brittany coming along behind them and Jess. You waved at them. The crew, the, that's me and the boys! Boys! Good noon to you all. Good noon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Regar regards, Daryl. How was class? Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more useless minor and I'll be out of here. What the hell? Okay, I know kids are useless, but still. <laughs> Geo just shrugged. A hand in his hoodie pocket while the other on his phone. We got to at least do something in our major today, though. Which I'm glad about. More papers, but it was at least something. Enough about papers. So about the Halloween party. Any ideas for a costume yet? As they talked with each other, at the corner of your eye, you notice a familiar figure. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. It was Soul. He came out of a classroom, and another person came afterwards, behind him, seemingly bored out of his mind. Okay, um, I think, so, guys, guys, yesterday, yesterday, I did choose, uh, Crow first, but I think we'll go with Soul this time first, okay? Okay, does that sound good? I love seeing the people that totally didn't try to kill us last time. Try? Pretty sure that guy did kill me, and I'd tell him to do it again. So this time we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, do we call him over, or do we join him? Hmm. I saved, right? Okay, well, you know what, actually? There's a very easy CG we can get. So, I'm just gonna get the CG that's easiest to get, okay? No. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Call Soul over. Not sparing the group a moment. I feel like he'll... No, I didn't like that. <laughs> Not sparing the group a moment. You make your way to where Soul is. Soul almost instantly notices you by the visible smile making its way to his face. His companion no Wait, did I not call him over? Wait, wait, wait. Call Soul over? Never mind, I didn't call him over. I just walked over, okay? <laughs> Hi there. You're friends with Sunny? Sunny. Sunny! He pats Soul on the back, causing the taller male to jerk slightly forward. Ah! Uh, Soul gives him an irritated look. Observing the way his face is now slowly turning red, why did he jerk him off? You know, because he's such a sunshine. He's Sunny! You let out a small giggle. Shifting your eyes towards Soul as he catches your gaze on his. I love Hugo, by the way. Upon landing eye contact, Soul quickly averts his gaze away from yours, holding up his hand as he tries his hardest to hide his face away. Like a nickname. Yes, Sonny loves the nickname I gave him. Right, Sonny? Winks. Soul remains silent, still refusing to meet your gaze. <laughs> That's adorable. For a moment, the three of you were silent before the shorter male speaks up once more. Okay, now I see why Haruko. 
I'd like to remind you all that I'm pretty sure Soul is like 6'5", so just because he's t taller than Hugo, who I'm pretty sure is an Asian guy, does not mean Hugo's that, like, super short, okay? <laughs> I just- I just need to speak up for- for us average- average height men, okay? <laughs> you know, a lot of women out there, they like to deny the existence of, uh, average height men, okay? They like to just lump us in with the short ones, okay? But I don't understand when I'm already taller than all the women, okay? <laughs> for a moment, the three of you were silent before the shorter male speaks up for once. I fucking hate you. <laughs> Fuck you, Chad, I'm not short. I'm- I'm average height. For a dude in one of the tallest countries in the world. You sure have- <clears throat> You sure have taste, Sonny. It's very pretty, like you said. A blush makes its way to your face, scratching the back of your head. You bit your bottom lip as you let out a small thank you. It's on the character profiles. Soul is 190. That's like literally past six foot. That's like way... I'm pretty sure that's like extremely tall. Pretty sure. Because I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure like 180 is like six foot. So... Right? I think. I'm not... I, I'm a Canadian. We use metric. But when it comes to height, we use... uh, We use Imperial. <laughs> anyway, nice to meet you. My name's Hugo. I'm this big old grumpy's best friend. 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, that's extremely tall. Glock, a pleasure to meet you too. He extends his hand for you to take in, which you merely accept. Shaking and puts it back on his side. A smile on his face as he did so. Then you hear a group of footsteps behind you. Hugo first notices the group behind you as he raised his head to meet one of their gazes. By the way, there's no way in hell... Nobody would- you would have never noticed a 6'6 man in the back of the class, okay? There's no fucking way in hell. Like, I've never seen him before in class. He's so mysterious. My brother, that guy hits his head on the ceiling every time he walks into a room, okay? Bro, there's like an indent in the doorway because of his head slamming into it every day. You'd see him. Trust me. He'd be sitting in class and the teacher'd say, Can you sit down? And he said, I'm already on my fucking knees, teach. That's how tall this guy is, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I don't think people realize the things they write. <laughs> there you are, clock. You just ran off like that when I, I got kind of worried. You with these people, clock. Oh, that's right. Ah, sorry for running off like that. Um, yeah. Soul. Hugo. These are my friends. You turn your body to face Crow and the others, while your gaze is still fixed on the duo. Crow gives the two a smile and a small wave. Although, it looks like Crow and Daryl are almost just as tall as Soul. Jesus. Daryl came up first, extending his hand for one of the two to take. Nice to meet you, I'm Daryl. And if you haven't heard yet, I am the ace of our school's football club. Hugh said with a smile. Hugo took his hand with a shake. I love you, Hugo. Falling up is Brittany as she just stares with a hand on her hip, while Jess was twiddling her fingers as she stuck close to Brittany's side. Hey, how's it going? H Hello? Between Brittany, Jess, and Daryl, it seems that the only, only the tall jock is the most enthusiastic out of all of them in this newfound friendship. I'm Hugo. I've heard about you, Daryl. Nice to meet you, too. Thankfully, Hugo returned the same energy as the jock. <laughs> I'm Jericho, but people call me Crow. Nice to meet your- nice to meet your acquaintance. Crow also handed out his hand for Soul to shake. However, Soul did not take it. You should probably be happy about that, Crow. I think the only thing Soul wants to do to you is murder you. There was slight awkwardness in the air between the two males, making Crow slowly retrace his hand back. No way! The atmosphere between the two, however, was cut short when Hugo gave out a loud gasp, marched towards Geo, who was way behind the group, a visible scowl on his face. Geo's eyes darkened as he tried to step back, but Hugo was quick on his feet as he engulfed the taller male into a hug. Somebody got a translation? I, I, I can't even begin to read that. Oh, hey, perfect! Thank you, Haruko! Uh, it's been a while. 
Geo? Thanks. Wait, Cat Lily did this? Roughly translates to long time no see, spar? Spar? What did he just start sparring him? Like he just they just started wrestling? You wanna wrestle? Tsk. The good old tsk. No idea what he says there, once again. Sorry, chant. Sorry, YouTube. No idea what they're saying. Subaru is, was the literal word. Subaru. Oh, I just saw your Geo, and I thought it was interesting. Subaru? Is he Japanese? Yes. I think they're supposed to be Asian, at the very least. Um, they haven't really confirmed this is, like, the real world, considering they're on, like, some Mount Olympus school. What a pain is the translation. Okay. Subaru, Subaru the car? No, Subaru the person. <laughs> what a pain. <laughs> and I don't know what this means once again, so we're just gonna click. I didn't want to see your, sorry, I didn't want to see your ugly face the entire day. No, the entire semester. But my luck seems to be slipping. Hey now, that's not a nice way to greet your brother. Another loud gasp was heard. This time it came from Daryl. He points at Geo quite a bit dramatically. <gasps> you have a brother, Geo! Oh, great. Another one. That's big brother to you. <laughs> I love him. Just means eh. <laughs> Just means eh. <laughs> Everyone's attention was now on the three of them. Brittany seemingly amused by Geo's newfound dilemma. Thank you, by the way, for all the help, guys. Much appreciated. Cat Lily. Thank you. Wow. What a hero. Cat did like two of the lines, I'm pretty sure. Everyone's attention was now on the three of them. Brittany seemingly amused by Geo's newfound dilemma. Crow just chuckled while Jess was surprised as well. I bet it was hard. You couldn't copy paste this, right? You probably had to just like what did you pull out the dictionary or something? Or did you cut you could take a screenshot and maybe uh Google might be able to translate it off the picture alone. Oh right. Hugo started finally letting go of Geo, the said male, cursing under his breath as he composed himself, and fixed his now ruffled hair as he walked towards you. We were actually going up to the rooftop for lunch today. We were hoping that you would like to come with us. He says, now standing beside Sol. Sol looks at you with anticipation. You... Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with Sol. I think the right play is to go with Sol. So we'll go with Sol and Hugo, I think, for lunch. I mean, sure. Oh, but I need to tell the others first if that's okay. Although I think... Yeah, that's another point for Soul. Sure thing. Take your time. Thanking and excusing yourself in the duo, you turn to the group, specifically to Crow. Never n nervousness suddenly engulfed you as you tapped the blue-eyed male on the shoulder. Also, guys, am I a little loud on the mic? Or is the game volume okay? Just a quick question. Sorry. I was just a little... I just felt like I've been a little loud lately. You're good? Okay. Alright. Crow took his head and turned his full attention to you. Um, is it alright for me to come with them for today? I just rewatched Avon and I thought I, I felt like I was a little loud, but if you say so, guys. I'm fine with it, Clock. Oh! He paused as if suddenly remembering something. But you have to ask Brittany for that as well. Upon hearing your name, Brittany turned her head towards you. You noticed a basket around one of her arms. Brittany, however, didn't give you a chance to ask. You can go ahead, Clock. You can join us whenever you want to. She gives you a smile, surprising you a bit. Huh. Without further ado, you excused yourself from the group before going with Sol and Hugo. I guess maybe she prepared something for us. Hugo gives you a smile. He turned to Sol. He gives you a smile of his own. His shoulders relaxed as if relieved. Let's go, then. The second part? Oh, don't worry. Uh, Cat Lily, Cat, Cat got the uh, the other translation. Someone else got the last word too. Hugo walks to his usual spot and got himself seated on a bench that you somehow never took notice before. Soul follows along, and in his hands is a large wrapped box that caught your interest. Ha ha ha! Sit in between them. <laughs> Is that your lunch, Soul? You can say that. 
as Soul unwraps the cloth, showing you three bento boxes. He takes up the first bento box that was settled on top, before giving the second one to Hugo. Hugo happily accepts the box, thanking Soul before taking on his chopsticks. Opening the container, Hugo lets out an awe sound, his eyes sparkling, drool slowly seeping out of the corner of his mouth. You actually listened, and... Did you cut these tiny sausages into octopuses? Keep your voice down. It's ringing in my ear. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Placing the jet box gently on his lap, Hugo rummages through his pockets before taking out his phone. Opening his phone's camera, he flips it horizontally and then starts clicking away, taking one or two photos. Hugo lifts the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he keeps gushing about. Oh my. It's so- is it- isn't it an adorable clock? That is pretty fucking adorable, bro. Your boyfriend just cooked you that? Wow. It's quite healthy, too. Well, eh, it's okay, actually. This is just rice. I thought it was cauliflower. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's a lot of cauliflower. And then I was like, wait, no. <laughs> wait, no. That's not a head of cauliflower. That is probably rice. But still, looks delicious. Isn't it an adorable clock? Looks edible so far. Well, I think it. I pretty. Yeah, I think it's edible. Yeah, it's a, this is a lunch. <laughs> there you see a various, or various ranges of food with a rice shape to match a moth, seaweed to design the face, along with using a cabbage leaf to form its wings. Right below the moth are mini sausages shaped like octopus. Don't don't you fucking don't say it. Mini sausages. Those are those are fucking hot dogs, brother. Those are hot dogs. Don't you lie to me. They're hot dogs. Wonderfully cute cut carrots were made to look like stars, and squeezed beside stuffed shiitake mushrooms. The egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip looked delicious. That's that's melted cheese? Oh, that's so good. I almost feel too bad to eat it. Just some roofies, otherwise, yeah, edible. Excuse me? This isn't even my lunch. You think he's roofying Hugo? Especially on how cute this little guy is. Hugo points at the silk moth-shaped rice. <laughs> Anybody want to have a go at uh, translating? Anybody know what he says? Itadakimasu? Yeah, thank you for the food. Yeah. Without wasting another second, Hugo starts digging in, scruffing down on the... Scruffing down on the rice like a wild hungry animal. Not. I think someone already got it. They said it's the itadakimas, itadakimas. The uh, thank you like for for the food basically. Did you make this by yourself, Soul? Oh, did someone just nut on it? Well, there's some extra flavoring. You can say that. Soul answers, opening his own container. You thought you'd see another form of food art made by Soul himself within the container, but instead was greeted by a simple ham and cheese sandwich. He takes out a slice, but before he could take a bite, he turns to you. Oh, that wasn't even mine. That was Hugo's. You guys just nut on Hugo's food. Have you eaten, Clock? You gonna feed me if I say no? You gonna feed me, bro? You gonna feed... No, I haven't, actually. Soul's eyes went wide, and Hugo gave you a shocked look. Before you knew it, Soul takes out another box and settles it on your lap. You can have this. It's an extra. Why do you have an extra? I didn't like how this looked, but I figured I can let Hugo finish it. It's a waste of ingredients. Nah, you don't have to, Soul. Really? No, I insist. Oh, for fuck's sake, just eat the same box. <laughs> I love Hugo so much. Hugo, who clearly had enough of the back-and-forth banter, suggests the idea before returning to his own box. <laughs> Soul hesitates. <laughs> protein shots from Gardania! <laughs> yeah, Gardania, can I get a few more protein shots in my, uh, in my bento box? <laughs> Gardania, you're right now. <laughs> I got you, clock! <laughs> Not. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that was a Lin shot. But eventually takes out a spoon and fork handing them to you. Tease him. Decline his offer of the utensils, he raises a brow in confusion. You don't want the f No! Oh! Daniel! Come on, Daniel, flavor it for me. Come on. 
Come on, you dumb cat boy. Get, get, in, get in on this. <laughs> you don't want the fork. Do you prefer the spoon? I have chopsticks. I have chopsticks if you want. <laughs> no, nothing of the sort. Then what is it? I want you to feed me. Soul's breath hitched his face. Went bright red at your wild suggestion. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I love Hugo. He's best boy. He's so like, I'm so fucking done with your flirting and I've only seen it for 10 seconds. He's like, you sat beside both of us, man. Why'd you do this? You're a grown ass man. <laughs> Hugo gives you both a side eye. Your proclamation was enough for him to actually stop eating, shooting you both a judgmental look as if saying, Really? Right in front of my bento box? <laughs> <laughs> he scoots a bit away from the two of you, not wanting to be part of your little fiasco as he returns to his meal. <laughs> I love very great use of character sprites. I love when uh, they move them around and stuff in games. Soul, however, was nervous for a bit. His eyes still transfixed on yours. Still couldn't believe what you asked from him. Are you just going to keep staring at him or what? Sh shut up. I'll... I'll feed him. Soul, he... <laughs> Wingman Hugo! Soul takes the spoon in his hand. Wingman Hugo, my man! You dab him up. Soul takes the spoon, a little bit too harshly. Scoops out some rice and a piece of the sausage. His whole face turning red to the point it reaches to the tips of his ears. With a shaky hand, he lifts the spoon for you to take. Nah, never mind. Hugo's enjoying this. Hugo's like, yeah, man. <laughs> you took a bite and chewed. The mixture of flavors, how the rice remained warm and fluffy, and the sausage's savory taste helps balance it out, sends a tingling feeling down your spine from your mouth. It's amazing. It's delicious. Soul, this is really good. Hugo nods along with you with gusto. Food stuffed on one cheek like a hamster. I know, right? You'd be honestly surprised. Soul. Oh my gosh. There's too many options I want to save at, chat. Um, you'd make a great house husband. Make l making lunch for Hugo. What do we got right now? We got six points with Soul. So I think if we say you'd make a great house husband, I think that's going to get us some... Yeah, man. Soul's eyes widened at your declaration. You really think so? I really do think so. Do you want to get married? Uh, Soul is definitely house husband material clock. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, excuse me. Run that back by me one more time. I really do think so. Do you want to get married? Or <laughs> He actually said, Do you want to get married? Soul is definitely house husband material clock. He can cook, he can clean, he can do anything. Wingman, Wingman Hugo. I'd rather not be your own personal butler. That was a compliment. The two banter, but you couldn't help looking at Soul and the way his eyes sparkle. They almost remind you of bright fireworks during the new year. Soul then went quiet, his gaze lost in thought. This caught your attention. Tilting your head to the side as he called as you called out his name. Hugo caught him for real, for real. Too er, too quick, too soon. Too soon, Soul. He was like, bro, bro, let me wingman. <laughs> He's like one of those clueless guys who as soon as one girl gives them a little bit of attention, they're like, marry me. Soul? You okay there? Although for this chat, I'm pretty sure 99% of this chat right now would have immediately dropped on their knees and said yes. What? Oh. I'm fine, clock perfectly fine. But there was hesitation in his voice. Like him. You said something, Soul? He clears his throat, his back straightened, and his eyes closed. <clears throat> that person. The one with braids. Person? Does he mean Crow? You mean Crow? For a split second, his gaze darkens. Yeah. Him. Can I ask you something? This confused you a bit made him interested all of a sudden, and towards Crow nonetheless. Maybe he would like to know more about him. Crow is known to be very friendly. Sure, what is it that you'd like to ask me? Do you... like him? 
Your heart drops and you nearly choked on your own spit. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I, I have like something stuck in my throat today. <clears throat> Maybe. No, I said I did say I would be going for soul in this round, so no! Is that enough? Yeah, it's enough. <clears throat> what makes you say that? You nervously laugh. It's his soul. Soul is not in my throat, you fuckers. N nothing of the sort. Hesitance lingered within his orange orbs, unsure of whether to believe you or not. It's Hugo. Um, <clears throat> wanting to change the subject before he gets any more suspicious, you blurt out the same question he threw at you. Uh, how about you, soul? Surely there's someone you like. He smirks. The very same grin he makes when he teases makes its way up to his ever handsome face. Why? Are you interested? A as if! A wild blush erupts from your face as you try to diffuse this topic. Soul chuckles from the way you stammer and fidget, his gaze softening. <laughs> so cute. Hugo eventually finished his own box, tucking it away and wrapping it back up. <laughs> S S Sally face stop stop twerking for him stop that have some shame Standing up from the bench Hugo stretched out his limbs and paced a few steps forward before turning to look at you in soul with his hands on his hips Is this what you guys do every day or at least when you both get together? You raised a question Hugo turned his head to you with a slight tilt uh, What do you mean you mean soul giving me lunch? He just keeps forgetting to bring his own Hugo pouts. And you never finish yours, so I do the honors of ever finishing good food. Thank you very much. Those bento box art. What inspired them, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? Shut it, go go. Go go. Oh now you're oh now we're using the nicknames now, Sonny. How sweet of you. You see here, Clock, my old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. But he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. And he really loves cute, cute things, like... With a finger under his chin, Hugo ponders for a moment, trying to remember something from the top of his head, but to no avail. He turns to his friend, his arms crossed, seemingly uninterested in answering whatever inquiry Hugo's going to throw at him. What was the name of your plushed horse, Sonny? Like hell, I am answering that. Boo. He owns a plush horse? Soul owns plushies? A ah, real man. Soul bites his lips, his face turning red upon the reveal of his little secret. That's so cute. You're just full of surprises, Soul. He says nothing as he fixes his choker. The red blush dinting his face makes its way to the tip of his ears, but appreciates your compliment nonetheless. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. This makes you wonder, why do people never bother to notice him? Why don't people want to get to know him? Maybe they just never gave him the chance because of how he looks. Not to mention his intimidating height. Okay, finally we point out? <laughs> but he isn't like that at all. In fact, he could be considered as a gentle giant. Could be! Time passed for a while and now Hugo and Sol are both leaning against the railings, observing the view below them. Me? Curious, you make your way to where they were. Hugo and Soul seem to be looking at something below. Their face is solemn and serious. Hugo's face is blank, while Soul's expression is a mixture of irritation and aggravation. You look down, and there you see a group of well-dressed people, but what makes them stand out is not from the way they dress, but from the way they carry themselves. They're clearly not from here. But the school's logo is on their uniform's chest pocket, says otherwise. They look so fancy. They look... rich. Dangerous. You couldn't help but hold your gaze in the smallest one in the group. An adult man. You're guessing that he must be a staff member. Maybe a teacher. But what sticks out about him is the eye patch on his face and a large scar behind it. it sends a shiver down your spine. Tch. High class mugs. Soul exclaims, pure disgust coating his tone. Not hiding it, a single bit as he pulls away from the railings, returns to the benches where you last were. High class? Ah, you don't know about the hierarchy, Clock? D no, not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I've ever even heard of it. A 
come I have never heard or seen one of them throughout my school years here? Hugo lets out a low chuckle, his attention still on the group below him. Then his gaze darkened. The usual happy-go-lucky attitude you've come to know disappeared in a flash, as if the person before you is a whole different person. I don't blame you. No one likes talking about them anyway. Oh, yeah, I love this sort. Hugo! Yeah, we got Hugo! Um, I guess I'll save, but, um, high class. About the art, the hierarchy. How come I've never heard of the hierarchy before? It's like a hidden thing. But that's what we call it. This school. No. The entire city. It's like a fighting pit. Whoever is the most powerful has a better chance in living a good life here. People come to this school to gain a second chance in life. But to achieve that, you have to make yourself well known. Make them think you're worth their time. If not, you're on your own. Okay, high class. He sends a chilling glare down at the group below. This school building isn't actually the real thing. Wait, what? But the school map clearly says that the address is... That's where they actually fool you. You might think you got it right. But we are sort of based on our background. We're sorted on our background. The real school building? Way farther than where we are. And their campus is ten times bigger and better. They get proper classes, have better equipment, everything is just better. Here, we only get the short end of the stick. The afterthought, if you will. If I have to guess, the well-off are in the main building? That's right. Son of a duke. Daughter of a businessman. Heck, as long as you're rich, you're in. Your chances for having better education rest there. <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> If you're a part of the high class, then you'll have a better chance of having a successful and stable life. But don't we have students here who are, like, super rich? You recall Crow introducing you to Jess, her being a daughter of a family owning a large company. But how come she's not part of the high class? There are some who ended up... <clears throat> there are some who ended up shifting down and moved to our building. Either they failed the class or got a violation. They didn't want that type of stain on their reputation, so they sent them here. Of course, some didn't appreciate that. They see us as someone lower than them. Hence. Hugo glances back at Soul. The said ma- I know we're outside, chat. I know we're on a rooftop. He's right beside me, bro. Why would you fart, chat? Are you trying to make our chances garbo? The wind just pushed it into Soul's face, goddammit. Hugo glances back at Soul, the said male now busying himself with his sketch pad. A soft look flashed in his eyes like how a mother would worry over their child. <laughs> Wind. <laughs> you fucking assholes. I would never trust it. I know, you know what? We're never having a meetup chat. We're never having a, a TwitchCon meetup. Nah, I know that shit will smell terrible. Not because of me. I'm showering. I'll be the only one showered with cologne, man. With some deodorant. I know that for a fact now. There, you understood something. Oh. They have to fight the weak to feel something, huh? They sound like nothing like but bullies. How come someone didn't step up to complain? Hugo laughs at your warrants as if you told him the best joke of his life. He shakes his head in disagreement. If only it was that easy. His laughter dies down, his expression back to being solemn as he scratches the back of his head. Actually, Clock, in this city... No one really gives a shit. Money is the only thing revolving around this city. You got no cash, you're done for. Which is why people like us, he turns to look at you dead in the eyes, are desperate to get into the higher class. If you so dare complain, he pauses, contemplating on the next set of words he's going to say, his mouth opening and closing like a guppy out of water. Instead, he gives you a warning look. His sky-blue eyes that once reminded you of summer skies are now cold like ice sharp icicles about to pierce you. You're better off dead. With one last look below, Hugo lets out a sigh as he turns to look somewhere else, trying to shove away the thoughts clouding his mind. But, that's the sad reality here. The, att the attention is good, great even. Your chances to get a stable life and even have a knock to stardom is high once you're part of the high class, much less graduate there.
I have nothing else to ask. This city is corrupted, he mutters under his breath, which makes me question, Clock. How were you able to get in the city? No, the better question is, why did you enroll in this school, if you don't mind me asking, that is? You're clearly not from here. Your eyes widen at the words that the well-dressed man said. N no, I refuse! Clock, I thought you'd just stay inside. You're not taking this farm! My home! You cut your father's words off, marching towards the tall man with loud and heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raised a brow at you, raising his hand to halt his men. His deep magenta eyes then turned to look straight into yours. It sent a chill down your spine. Oh, he has art now! I don't think he had this before. Yo, this guy slays! What the fuck? And he's like a pre- <laughs> Whoa, whoa! Bit feisty saying that this is our first time meeting, right? Let me introduce myself first. My name is- <laughs> Sorry, speak- say that again? But you may call me Mr. Z. And as for our little agenda... How about this, little lamb? If you manage to pay off your debt for the next five years, I'll let you off the hook and let you keep your land. Five years? You can handle that. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. You think his name is Zeus? I really like that guess, actually, considering all the characters that are, uh... The, the Greek mythology surrounding the game. Uh-uh. He tucks, waving a finger in front of your face. He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. A mischievous smile appearing on his handsome features. Zesty! Brother's the whole goddamn lemon, brother, bro. He is fruity as fuck! <laughs> and he slays. But I have some conditions you need to meet. He went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with his sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The city? But we can't even afford to take him to college. What more move? What more moving in the city? Your father interrupts the man mid-sentence. The man merely gives your father a side glance, making the old man freeze on his feet before returning his gaze back to you. No need to worry. He'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for his education and accommodation. Suddenly, he burst out in laughter, throwing his head back a bit, as if he just heard a very funny joke. <laughs> See? I'm not that cruel. Wouldn't you agree, Clock? But just like I said before, I want you to pay off your debt. Land doesn't come in cheap, darling. And I've been very patient with how long this land's payment has been postponed. A sudden jerk on your collar made your heart jump, his face now mere inches away from yours, his brows furrowed in anger and filled with spite. Clock! Not one step, old man! He screams at your father, not sparing him a glance as he kept his hold on your collar. You try to claw his hands away from it, but to no avail, seeing that you are losing air, losing more air the more you struggle. Listen here, punk. I don't care what kind of method you're going to do in order to make money. A dark smile appeared on his face. It sends a shiver down your spine. It does kind of look like a constellation. Being a good citizen and being a part... Being a good citizen and get a part-time job like the rest. Or whore yourself out in strip clubs. My cat's like meowing a bunch. I'm trying to give him attention, but he really wants attention. Well, I'm not whoring myself out, so I guess I'll get a part-time job. Legal or legal. I don't fucking care. As long as you reach the amount. If not, well, you can say goodbye to your little farmland. Sorry, I can't. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eye that is telling you that that's not all. Letting go of your collar, he steps back as you greedily take in the air that you get lost. Tears making its way towards your eyes, threatening to drop. So, little fawn. What's it going to be? 
You bit the bottom of your lip. You turned to look at your father. His eyes were clearly telling you to decline. You didn't want to comply to this man's words, much less take his offer. You think he might throw you another form of debt letting him fund you to go to the city. There's something about this man that screams dangerous. A man that slays this hard? He's not real. But you were too desperate to lose your to not lose your home. Your only home. Tick tock, sweet thing. I haven't got all day. Wow, that's a really great clock reference. <laughs> it just works great, because my name is Clock. <laughs> the tall man's gaze still fixed on you, waiting for your answer. Do you accept? Do you recall the dream you had this morning? It felt as if it happened yesterday. Despite the events that happened nearly four years ago, you're still being haunted by the deal the tall man offered to you. Hugo observes the way your face hardened. They were your eye the way they the way your eyebrows arched and a drop of sweat dropping amidst the cool autumn wind. There he understood. Let me guess. It's something you can't avoid? I honestly don't know. My father never really disclosed as to why we were in debt. But I was so desperate to not lose my only home. I need to make it to the up to the higher class no matter what. Three jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. Three jobs? And school? What, what do you mean? This is my last year in this cursed university and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo's gaze remains on your figure. You realize you haven't answered his question yet. My family owns a farm in the south. You finally speak, making Hugo perk up his eyebrows in curiosity. Uh, what sort of farm does your family have? Oh, well, we have some wheat fields and we tend to animals such as cows and horses. Horses! Bet Soul's going to love that place. That sounds nice. I'd love to be out of the city once in a while. You give him a small smile. Yeah, some might say it's boring, but it's not. You get to pet horses and cows. Well, you should really invite me or even Soul over then, if ever. Wink. Having you give us a tour there would be a great change of scenery. But that means you're a long way from home. Don't you miss it? Um, I'm gonna say a little bit. A little bit. Okay, a little bit. That's alright. It's normal to feel a little homesick. Someone mentioned Homestuck earlier, and now all I can think of is fucking Homestuck. Or... I think it was Home... Maybe... Yeah. I heard great things about this city, about this school. Hugo remained quiet, listening to you as you went on. That is not an excuse to talk about it! <laughs> you two YouTube comments, I don't want to hear a word. If I can manage to come on top, and maybe be part of the higher class like you said, then I can maybe save my family's farm. Crossing his arms, he says nothing, as he looks at you one last time before letting out an endearing chuckle. You remind me of him. Like him? Ah, I'm rambling. Don't mind me. <laughs> having caught red-handed, having caught red-handed, he waved his waves his hands around in slight panic. His face now red as a cherry. You tilt your head, tilt your head in confusion. Just then, you felt a presence behind you. Turning around, you're met with Soul. His glare is sting, stingy and directed at Hugo. The shorter male, however, didn't mind it. Probably used to it. It's almost time. We should head back. All right, all right. With nothing else to do, the three of you left the rooftop. You take one step down, looking up and ready to converse with Soul and Hugo when you suddenly lose your footing. Clock. Whoa, you all right there, Clock? Yeah. Thank you, Soul. Eyes wide in shock, you hold onto Soul's arm tight, his other arm wrapped around your waist as he pulls you close to his chest. You can feel both of your heartbeats run. Pulling away, you study your footing, observing the stairs. Cursing at how weirdly formed it is. Be careful next time. Sheesh, this school and its bad architecture. Also one of the few flaws here. The stairs are all wonky. It's also why it's forbidden to go up here. We're troublemakers, though. Nice. Hugo lets out a cocky grin, then goes down the stairs with much ease, as if it's nothing to him. What a fucking menace. <laughs> I'm so, I'm Hugo. I want I love I love Hugo so much. Turning to Soul, you grab hold of his shoulder. He did not mind as you use him as a guide in descending down the stairs. School bell rang throughout the hallway, signaling the start of next classes. Hugo lets out a groan. 
Ugh. I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my coach in archery. Why don't you skip then? Hugo's eyes popped open. It became bright like a light bulb appearing out of his head and lighting up. Light bulb. Soul knows exactly what that looks mean. <laughs> don't tell me you're actually- I'm gonna skip class! How about it? Fuck this school. If they're gonna treat us badly. Then let's be the bad guys. A mischievous look makes its way to Hugo's face. Soul already knew what that look means. Sighing as he did so, he turns to you, waiting for your response to Hugo's offer. The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is with Crow in art history. But then again, your teacher probably will probably only do some boring-ass introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? Okay, I think this is actually like a big divergence in um in the route. Um, fuck it, we skip, or I couldn't afford to skip this one. Mm, 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 mm. I think we'll choose skip later. I think we'll go with him for now, because I want to do his route first, so I couldn't afford to skip this one. No, wait, f uh, no, no, sorry, we skip, we skip, and we're going to hang out with them longer. But we will have to come back. We will come back when we do Crow's bit, okay? Fuck it, we skip. Hugo lets out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up. Soul gives you a cheeky smile of his own. But how do we do that, though? Obviously, we can't go through the, en through the entrance since it's guard closed and guarded. I know a way. How is a college care? What do you mean a college cares if you're skipping? What? Yo, my college didn't give no fucks. Without wasting any more time, Soul leads the way, going through the back side of the school near the gardens. The edges, of course, were barricaded by a tall iron fence. Soul finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Well, you didn't have to pull my pants to- Hmm. <clears throat> well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this hole, Soul? He did. I did. Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Soul waits for you first before following right after. The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs, the leaves falling as you passed by them. The red and orange leaves scattering around and some making its way to your uniform before you all eventually made it out and met with pavement. <laughs> so, where did we go? I didn't say nothing. Hugo thought for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly, he lets out a gasp, scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Soul's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller male. Sherlock Holmes is out?! My ears. Oh yeah, it's that detective movie I keep seeing on the television. Oh, I thought that won't come up to next week! Did I set the date wrong? With that, Hugo started sprinting, leaving you and Soul behind. For the love of... Soul placed his hands on his hips before walking to where Hugo ran off to you to as you followed. Hugo kept tapping away on his phone, his shoulders went slump. Guess he did get the date wrong. Shoving his phone back in his pocket, he turned to you and Soul. He clasped his hands together and pulled the biggest puppy eyes you've ever seen. We have got to watch it. Can we, Clock? Can we, Sonny? Hugo begged. You can go ahead and watch the movie. I'm gonna roam the arcade while you're at it. Hugo pouted. His eyes went half-lidded and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. But it's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please... I like the Sherlock Holmes movies, they're good. Soul, however, basing off his expression, isn't in the mood. Hugo gives up and turns to you. How about you, Clock? Would you like to watch the movie with me? The ticket on- the ticket and food's on me, of course. Look. <laughs> I would love to go to the movies, but I feel like the arcade is gonna be- well, okay. We're gonna have to- we're gonna do both, chat. What do you want to do first? Do you want to watch the movie or do you want to go to the arcade? Which one would you prefer we do first? Hugo does sound, not sound like the name- the correct name for someone who looks like that. Why? Is- what do you mean Hugo doesn't work? movie do the movie first okay we'll do the movies then we'll do the arcade now everyone i know i know gardenia has seen 
the second day already, so I'm pretty sure Gardenia know, knows what happens when you go to the arcade. But I won't spoil what happens, okay? We'll just go to the movies. Hugo gives you a bright smile. Heck yeah, I knew you were a trooper, Clock. Come, let's go grab some tickets and snacks. Do you want popcorn or something else? The shorter male went along ahead towards the movie theater with, with you, coming along, following up behind you. Soul clicked his tongue. He shoved his hands in his pants pockets as he followed along behind you. When I hear the name Hugo, I think of a buff person. Really? I think of like a nerdy, like nerdy, like old timey person. Like not not old, like steam. Like Hugo's like a steampunk name. I always find stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. That's what I always think of when I think of the name Hugo. Very like academic name kind of thing. But this isn't technically the same Hugo that you're thinking of. Also, this is like Hugo. I'm 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 pretty sure I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It's probably Hugo. Hugo, probably, but I'm just saying Hugo. Hugo took notice of this and raised a brow. Oh, I thought you weren't interested in the movie, Sonny Boy. Maybe you're right. It does look interesting. Stop making excuses. Let's go. <laughs> Soul takes hold of your wrist and drags you away from Hugo and to the movie theater. What? Hey! Come back here, I'm talking to you! Soul went ahead to the counter and bought tickets for the three of you. Soul turned around and gave one ticket to you. Your fingers brushed with his, causing him to blush. Finally caught up to you two, Hugo pouted as he crossed his arms looking at Soul. I thought the tickets were on you, Hugo. It is, but guess it's on Soul now. Not that I'm complaining or anything, but this is supposed to be my treat. Oh well, the food's still on me. Wait right here. Popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. Hugo scurrying off to the food booth, leaving both leaving you and Soul one last time. You walk towards the now showing pictures, examining the poster. Sherlock Holmes, huh? Hugo's into detective movies. You turn to ask Soul. He placed a hand on his hip and he che as he checked the poster next to you. You can say that. He aspires to be one. That's quite charming of him. And Sherlock Holmes is Sherlock Holmes is in his inspiration. That's really cool, actually. It's just one of them. I see. How about you, Soul? What's your favorite genre? Soul raised his brows at you. He placed a finger on his chin as he looked up, staring at the ceiling. I like supernatural horror and thriller based. Along with the tales of the Headless Horsemen or those original fairy tales by the Grimm brothers. Ah, uh, those all sound gruesome. I bet you feel weirded out by it. Oh, wait, what do you mean? I actually. Yeah, I love those movies, bro. Really now? Of course I do. I think they're very interesting. I love the thrill they give. Soul stares at you in awe before a smile breaks out on his face. Then maybe we could watch one together. I'm back. Hugo's familiar voice was heard. You turned around and saw him walking towards both of you. Two large bags filled with popcorn on each arm and a large cup being held. Oh, let me. He said, taking one bag from Hugo's arm. He thanks you for the help. I've got the snacks. Hope you like popcorn, Clock. I love it, dude. Then turns to Soul. Come on, let's get in before the movie starts. I can't wait for my gums to be scratched the fuck up from the kernels. Soul nods as you and Hugo follow him towards the entrance of the movie theater. He ends up the three tickets, then the three of you enter. This isn't it. This piece wants you to believe it's the ultimate evidence for this case, when in fact, you were halfway through the movie... The bag of popcorn halfway finished. You looked at the blue-haired male on your left as, the, as his gaze transfixed on the large screen before you. Hugo, during the beginning of the film, was really giddy, but now he was silent, seemingly engrossed with the scene happening in the movie. His hand goes on autopilot as he munches on each bite of popcorn. To your right, Soul, surprisingly, was also too engrossed with the movie before him. You need to piss. You've been holding it for a while, since you don't want to miss out the important scenes, but Mother Nature is knocking so, you hard, so hard on your door. You tap Soul's shoulder. He turned his attention to you. You need something. I need to go to the comfort room. Would you like me to accompany you? I'm not, I'm not six years old, bro. No, it's fine. Just enjoy the movie. Soul gave you a nod, and you took it as a signal to stand up from your seat, ducking down, making sure not to block the screen for the viewers at the back as you sped walk towards the movie theater's comfort room comfort room what Jeez, and it was already getting interesting too i'll probably just ask hugo what happened when i was gone well time to head back the forceful opening of the door startled you 
A few grunts were heard, and the shuffling of feet as if they were in a struggle. <clears throat> you went quiet. You better speak the fuck up or else. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. How many times do I have to tell you? Bullshit. Ugh. Your eyes widened as you stopped breathing. You quietly but quickly went to the nearest toilet stall. What is going on? A fight? In the cinema, out of all places. Whatever is giving going by the door is clearly something you don't want to get involved with. Just tell us who the traitor is that you're in cahoots with and I'll let, I'll let you on. Again? I have no idea what you're talking about. Guess I have no choice. Oh! You hear the sound of the light bulb being popped along with a portion of the comfort room's light going dim. Gardania, now is not the time! You're gonna get us killed! <laughs> Only half of the room is now lit up. <laughs> Please! I don't know! I swear! Imagine this is happening and you just hear some guy in the toy go... <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just about done. <laughs> Please, I don't know, I swear! I'm giving you one last chance, buddy. A little shuffling was heard. The rough voice seems to whisper something that you cannot hear. Then you hear breathing as it gets shorter and heavier. <laughs> He's here! I swear, just look around, you, you're bound to find him here! Please don't kill me! Maybe the gun's too merciful. N no Your nose caught something. It stings as it fills the air, the edges of your eyes watering. You then felt something wet hitting the tip of your shoes. You looked down and your eyes widened. Oh, it was right outside our stall. Oh my god, someone's having their period chat. B blood Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Someone just got killed. Oh, okay, that's that's a lot better than the other option. And the body is right in front of your stall. What? Hmm? There's someone else here. Shit, did he hear me? Yeah, he heard the fart. Well, well, well. Seems like we have a lost lamb on our shoulders. <laughs> then you hear the stall one block away from you was roughly opened. Hmm, not here, huh? Come on, little lamb. Don't try to hide. Ma'am, this is the men's room? It's unisex. Shit, I need to I need to do something. You quickly looked around, trying for a way to escape, but there's nothing but a small rectangular window just above the toilet. You can try to pry it open and call out for help. Now I feel like I'm getting closer to you. He's about to open my stall. What should I do? Uh, hold on to the door. As soon as the owner of the rough voice tried to open your stall- That was really quick. That was really nice. Try to open your stall's doors, however, you quickly grabbed onto the knob, pulling with all your might to prevent the man behind it from prying it open. Oh, so you're feeling feisty, huh? Suddenly, you were pushed out of the door. The man's incredible strength catches you off guard, catching, causing you to be pulled in, tripping in on the bo tripping on the body and bumping onto the owner of the rough voice. You looked up and froze. Your eyes meet with a stinging gold with stinging gold eyes. He's dressed in all black with black leather gloves to match. He roughly grabbed your hair, causing you to hiss and groan from the sudden pain from your head. You've given me enough trouble, little boy. Now you must pay for it. Fuck, please. I don't want to die. You closed your eyes, tears stinging the edges as you tried to pry off the man's heads off your head, but to no avail. Urgh. The pain from your head is now gone. Then you felt a hand coming to touch your hair. You flinched. You slowly backed away, your legs shaking as you still refused to open your eyes. Your arms wrapped around you. Clock, it's okay. And you hear that all too familiar voice. I'm here, Clock. It's all right. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I love them. They're such a dynamic duo. Before you was soul. Haruko, I'm going to kill you. Stop with your poop. You're disgusting. Before you was soul. Right behind him was Hugo. Both of their expressions are filled with worry. <laughs> the side eye. But your focus was on the splattered blood across the walls. Hugo wa notices this and tries his best in blocking the view. Soul's hand then went up to reach out to you, but he stopped midway, afraid as if he'll burn you. Without even thinking, you quickly wrapped your arms around Soul, 
your shoulders shaking as you buried your face on his chest. Hart <laughs> goes a little too excited for the poop jokes. Soul took this as a sign and gently wrapped his big arms around around you. A hand coming to caress your hair, trying to comfort you as he shook in his hold. Can we go out, please? Without much of a word, Soul escorted you out from the scene before you, his hold tight and secured around your shoulders. Soul gives Hugo a look, and the shorter male just sighed, waving his friend away with a fanning motion. I'll take care of it. You and Soul left. Hugo lets out an irritated tisk as he looks down at two bodies on the ground. God, what a pain in the ass. Hargo, we already we were about to leave the washroom. We already washed our hands. The sky is now dark, indicating it's near night. You finally got out of the movie. You look down and stared at your shoes, noticing a few splatters of blood. You gripped Soul's arm. He took notice and looked at your shoes. Seeing the blood, he kneeled down on one knee and took out his handkerchief. No, it's all right. Doubt it. Ew, don't use a handkerchief, bro. That's disgusting. Use a napkin or something. He wiped the blood off of your shoes before folding his handkerchief and shoving it deep in his pockets. Ugh. He looks at your disheveled look. Let me ask you again. Are you alright, Clock? I'm... Uh, I'm gonna save again. I'm not or I'm fine? I'm gonna say I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm not okay. I just saw a, I just saw a dude die and then I almost died. I'm not okay. How and why? You ask no one. The terrifying experience kept repeating in your mind. Soul broke your trail of thought by placing his large hand on your, the top of your head. Also, when I played this originally in the first day two version of the game, that was a lot more explicit, by the way. Like, a lot more explicit. I don't know if that's in the NSFW version now, but I was playing the safe, like the safer work version back then, too. And there was a lot more that happened. Like, he he was doing a lot more, okay? Yeah, I think Haruko just shit themselves. Sorry, Haruko. I'm sorry to hear that. Soul broke your trail of thought by placing his large hand on top of your head. Older version was something. I mean, it was just words. It was just descriptions. But... I, I remember. You can watch my day two video. I remember because even even one of my friends was super shocked by it and she was even like disgusted and it was kind of oh my god was that just in the arcade I remember the bathroom arc having that too cuz I remember him reaching up your your shirt I remember a little bit more in the bathroom part too but maybe that's just for the arcade I don't know cuz you do also well I don't want to spoil it so you looked up at him and he gave you a soft reassuring smile his hand now off of your head don't think about it anymore. What app? What matters is that you're here with me. It was just in the arcade? Okay. Looked around and noticed that Hugo wasn't around. I believe Bunny because Bunny is obsessed with this game. Yeah, okay. They just basically said it themselves. Where's Hugo? He's got it covered. You don't need to worry about him. How about I walk you home? Huh? You know, to keep you safe. I'll keep you company. I'll keep you safe. Do you trust me? I trust you. Then let me take care of you. Soul gently takes hold of your hands, and wraps it around his larger one, his gaze never leaving yours, a bright smile on his face. Lead the way then. You felt safe. You felt safe. Safe with someone. Safe with Soul. The walk back to your apartment was quiet, save for a few nightly bugs making a few hums then and there. Soul's hand is still wrapped around yours. He's warm. Couldn't help but steal a few glances at Soul. He looks back at you. He said nothing, but the more he stared at you, the more longing his eyes were giving. Gives you another one of his bright smiles. Was this CG in the original game? I'm not sure. Maybe. But it's nice. Squeezes your hand, you squeeze back, making him chuckle. What is it? Nothing. Your hand feels cold. Let me fix that. He hummed as he raised the hand that he's holding. Oh. What? There. Now it feels warmer. 
He teased, a blush of his own appearing on his face. Well, <clears throat> I... That's not how you warm hands up. Is that so? I'd love to see how you would do it. Soul! He just laughed at you, his face still red as you playfully hit his side. Eventually, your walk came to an end, and you're met with the front door of your apartment. Let go of your, you let go of the hand Soul was holding. He nearly reached out. He nearly reached out to keep hold, but stopped himself. He turned to face him. Well, this is my place. Oh. I'll see you tomorrow then? Uh, of course. But we don't have classes to more, together tomorrow, though. That's all right. Maybe we can hang out after classes to continue on with the project? I'll keep your word for it, then. You turned to face your apartment's front door, taking out your keys and finding the one you need. But before you inserted the key to your apartment, you turned your head to look at Soul's tall figure still unmoving from his position. Thank you for today. I really owe you one. He paused, then his shoulders relaxed. Don't worry about it. Just know that you can count on me. Unlocking your front door, you fully you fully turned to, around to give Soul one last wave with a smile on your face. He returned with his own smile before walking off towards the exit. You entered your apartment, the lights dim as you groaned, searching for the light switch. Much better. You nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. You open your fridge and started rummaging around for something to eat. I forgot to do my groceries. Let out an irritated sigh, seeing there's nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday's dinner. You shrugged, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. You don't really feel like cooking or ordering either. Sighing one last time, you closed the door to your fridge as you made your way to your room. Damn. You place your school bag near your desk as you take your seats, skimming through the notes you've taken for the day as you write down some write down needed notes. You clicked your tongue as you tapped your blank notebook with the tip of your pen going on with your silent staring contest with the blank paper before you you let out a groan. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what is this, bro? What is this? What is what come on, man. <laughs> That's down bad. That's a down bad photograph, by the way. Deciding to do work later, you closed your notebook and stood up. You turned to your window, noticing it before noticing it being slightly ajar. That's weird, I thought I closed this. You went near it to close it, shut, but was met with a now broken lock. You cursed. I thought I already replaced this two days ago. <laughs> the tissues. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't buy my locks online. You let out a groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into your living room. Huh, I wonder if that broken lock has anything to do with the NSFW version of this game. Link in the description below. Please support the creator. Your TV blared as you munched on some leftovers you got from the French, a movie currently playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about, starring her favorite lead actor. Kind of get what she was gushing about. The lead does look attractive. Blonde wavy hair with sharp eyes with eyes as pink as fuchsia. And you still can't remember the actor's name. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> You took out your phone as you start to search up the name of the actor when it suddenly changed and instead of the blonde actor on the screen, a report comes instead with a banner below. Another missing persons case? Your heart dropped before turning off the TV. The incident back in the cinema replaying in your mind. You quickly turned off your television as you made your way to your kitchen, hoping to take your mind off of things. A, B, C. You open your fringe, feeling the cold hair hitting your face as you rummage through. Taking out a pitcher of orange juice, you take a glass in your cupboards as you pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. Check the clock on the wall. Hey. 9.30 p.m. That late already, huh? Check your front door and windows, seeing everything locked before grabbing your glass and finishing the last drops of the orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. Now dressed in your nightwear, you let out one last stretch, a yawn escaping from your mouth. You made my boxers and a t-shirt? Getting in your bed sheets, you laid in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Oh, sorry, no, never mind. My jeans. <laughs> My jeans, yes. That's what I'm wearing to sleep. Another yawn escaped your lips. <sighs> you must be really tired, you thought. Your eyes going half-lidded. Then eventually, sleep took over. The moon was high up in the sky. The night is quiet, save for a few honks from late-night cars. Honka honka. But all of that is not enough to wake the sleeping residents. 
Excuse me? What was that? Hmm. Excuse me! Still broken, huh? You should be careful, pumpkin. Clad in all black with a mask of the same color adorning his face. He slowly makes his way to the next sleeping figure. Excuse me, you broke the lock, you fucker! Wait, you're gonna just break the lock again and say, oh, I'm so happy he replaced the lock. <laughs> his reddish eyes bright, filled with adoring love. He reached down and stroked a finger against his beloved's cheek. Look at my sleepy sweetheart. Makes me wonder who supplies Hugo those sleeping pills. He lets out a low chuckle as he leaned closer to clock. Excuse me? I forgot about that. The fucking orange juice, bro. Pulling down his mask, he leans forward, checking his face before continuing. He buries his face at the dip of his shoulders as he leaves a peck. Takes a deep inhale. He shakes as if he took a whiff of a dangerous and addictive drug. His eyes bright as he examines every feature of his soulmate's face as he gives Clock a, Clock's cheek a kiss. So this was in the original version of Day 2. Fuck. You smell so good. Pardon me. Sniffa sniffa. He lifted his arm and watched as it flops down on. He really is a dog boy. Deep in sleep. Like Sleeping Beauty. He nibbles his neck, earning him a soft whimper from the sleeping individual. He just chuckled. Quite ticklish, aren't you? And he kept going. He kissed and lapped on the same spot to the point a mark started to form. Our time today isn't enough. It's never enough. I want more of you. I want to be with you. Every waking day. His gaze went from hurt to desperate, his focus still on the figure sleeping before them. If only... <clears throat> if only you knew how much I crave your attention every day. It hurts. So please, let me. Tucking a loose strand away from his face, he gives him a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Clock's lips. Shiver ran down his spine at the contact. And as much as he would like to stay a little bit longer, his time is due. He backs away as he covered his face once again with his face mask. He walked towards the ajar window, turning back one last time. Sorry about your window, pumpkin. I'll make it up to you someday. Carefully opens the window again. And with that, he's gone. K Kitty, excuse me. You really caused me some trouble today. Fucker, so it is you. Fucking traitor! What? My gun? Heh, <laughs> who would have thought? I love this fucking shot. This was in the thumbnail of Day 2 originally, and it's still just as fucking cool, chat. Hell yeah, we love Hugo. Who would have thought? Our sweet doggy is biting their master's hand. Though, not gonna lie... We should have seen this coming. You're talking too much. You haven't even fired a gun since- <sighs> oh. Shit. They're slowly figuring me out. I don't think I could make it for the next few days. Sonny, you've done enough for me. I think. This is the end of our deal. Hmm. To be continued. Okay, I'm gonna save. I don't know if I'll have to redo all that anyways. Oh my, oh my lord. What are we at now, bro? Okay. To be contondered. So now we're gonna go through it. And we're gonna pick some other options. You know how it is. You know how it be, chat. You know how it be. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go back to this one. No, no, no. We'll go back to the cinema and uh, we'll go to the arcade this time, okay? And then after the arcade, we'll go to the, um, after the arcade, we'll go with Hugo and we'll do the other stuff, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I've been saving a lot. I do that a lot. <laughs> to be fair, every time I play this game, all my saves are deleted, so that's wonderful. <laughs> every time I, every time there's a new update in this game, I've had to replay the game, so it's fine. 
Uh, they're usually, by the way, I usually save a lot because a lot of CGs and stuff. I uh, I use them for screenshots for thumbnails, so don't mind me. Um, let's go to the arcade. Hugo shrugs. <laughs> you mind? Yeah, it annoys you. It annoys chat. All right, go on your little impromptu date then. Besides, I don't want a third wheel either way. D date? You're the one who decided we should skip class and do whatever we want. Yeah, and I want to watch a movie. Well? No, wait. Well? Don't let me stop you two. Hugo stuck his tongue out at soul. The said male only rolled his eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be heading in now. I'll just give you guys a call one where to meet. Sure. You and Hugo parted ways. He gave you both a wave before heading in a different direction. Honestly, though, Chad? Honestly? Why didn't we just go to the movies and then go to the arcade after? I know a guy died, but we could have still gone to the arcade. I think it would have been fun. Soul turns to you. Should we get going, clock? Of course. Gamer moment, gamer moment, gamer moment! The flashing neon lights of the arcade's exterior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ears. I've never been here before. Is this place new? I love Super Shell! Not really. It's just hidden within the city. I see, I see. Do you go out a lot, Soul? You seem to know places. I know places because I get my ass dragged by Hugo. Is that so? You laughed. Soul just shrugged as he shook his head. He takes out a few coins from his pocket before handing it to you. They were tokens. <laughs> he just walks around with tokens in his pockets. So, which one are you going for first? Wow, you came in prepared. As always. Come on. Soul hands, holds out his hand and you accepted it. He held it tight with a light squeeze as you and him roam around the arcade. You and Soul went and played multiple arcade games. Some you win and some he does. But you often get the feeling he lets you win for the sake of winning. Personally, chat, I'm a big claw machine kind of guy. I always win. Yeah, that's not, that's not the truth. I win 50% of the time. That's 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 still really fucking impressive, okay? <laughs> Bro be walking around jingle jangle jingle. He's Markiplier. <laughs> that's not true! That's not true! I just come prepared. I just start with a lot of tokens, okay? I don't go back to get more. I'm not an addict. I'm a good gambler. Come on, soul. This is like the fifth time I won. Ain't no way you're this bad. Maybe you're just that good, clock. You flatter me. Just as when you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you've ran out of tokens. Soul takes a notice of this, of course, and gave out some of his to you. I'll go to the counter and grab a few more tokens. You don't mind staying here for a bit, right? Oh, how much should I pay you for the tokens? It's on me. Don't worry about it. Wait here. Why wouldn't we just go with him? Giving you one last look, he hurriedly went to the counter. Look around the area. The dinging sounds from various machines fill the arcade. From the corner of your eye, you spot a claw machine. Win him a prize! Maybe playing a few games wouldn't hurt. Go to the claw machine, you check the contents inside. A cat plushie, a Shiba Inu plushie, and a horse plushie. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. Um, we should definitely go over the horse plushie, because I feel like that's what he's going to want the most. A cat plushie is what I would personally go for. I always go for the cat plushie, but horse plush is awesome. Always go to the claw machines and only the claw machines? Is that because you end up spending all your money at the claw machine, Gardenia? I know that feel. Horse plushie. There's no clock like horse clock. You remember how Soul likes horses. Maybe you can try to win one for him. These are his tokens, after all. He took out some of the tokens Soul gave to you and inserted one in the token the coin slot. Machine whirs to life as you take the joystick on your left hand while hovering the red button on your right. It takes at least 10 tries. It does not take at least... That was only one. I, I, won a pl I won twice last time I went to the claw machine arcade, okay? I won twice. In the you bought 20 tokens. I did buy 20 tokens. But it cost two tokens each. And I won the first prize within two tries. You bought 20 tries last time. You were focused. Eyeing the claw in its, posi in its position, trying to align it with the horse plush. I hate gender sometimes. He's a liar. I won the first try on both, actually. Actually, revisionist history. I won both tries, first time. 
The claw takes hold of the plush. Your eyes widen as you cross your fingers, hoping it catches it. But you're interrupted with a sudden smack to your ass. Ow! You jerked and turned around. Why did I jerk off? What the fuck? <laughs> well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> I'm gonna give him a stupid voice. What do we have here? You turned around and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like those typical spoiled rich kids you see in movies. His hair a bit tussled with two men, you assume are his bodyguards, beside him. He reeks of tobacco, making you gag. Tobacco. <laughs> Said nothing but tried to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You're guessing he's with this asshole. Now where do you think you're going there, sweetheart? You alone? Yes, and I would pretty much prefer to be alone. The man, however, did not listen. Why don't you come with me and I'll show you how these games are played. He raised his hand to reach your shoulders. Before he could touch you, however, you kicked him between his legs. Ah, the good old nut kick. He doubled over and clenched his lower region, a groan escaping his lips. His goons were taken aback and rushed to help him. That was my chance. Don't let him get away. Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you as you ran. You turned every corner you can, trying to make them lose you. But three against one is not a good matchup. Anyone, please, someone help me! He pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. You cursed under your breath as you focused on running. All you can think about at that moment is to get out. You managed to get out of the arcade, but you can still clearly hear the man and his goons on your trail. You looked around and you found a few toilet stalls. Ah, okay, Bunny was right. Here it is. I believed you, Bunny, but... You rushed towards it and got in a stall, hurriedly hope opening and locking it as soon as you got in. See, this is good game development because they knew what was up. They were like, I'm going to reuse that bathroom, CG. <laughs> I'm going to reuse that bathroom background. The place stinks, but you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corners of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find him. The man's voice echoed. You try to think of something and you thought of calling Soul. You quickly took out your phone. No signal. Are you for real right now? You can hear how aggressive they tore each open each stall. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Anyone, please. There you are. No, please. You've been a very bad boy. But don't worry. You can make it up to me by doing me a favor. Fuck you and your favors. Tsk. I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do it the hard way. He forcefully grabbed the edge of your uniform. Your eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. You quickly grab hold of his wrist as you try to push him away. He's too strong. He forcefully lifts off your uniform, revealing your stomach to him. You're going to give me a good little time, darling. Boys, hold him down. N no! Fuck off! Let me go! tears that were hanging by finally fell down your cheeks as you tried to stop him from going any further. The two large men with him held you down as you try and struggle, but to no avail. Your vision is slowly being blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use. His grip is too strong and there's no one near to hear me. You closed your eyes shut. Please just end quickly. What? Hey! Judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off of you as he's thrown to the side. Excuse me! He jerked him off! You hear flesh hitting flesh. And another one. That's more like bones breaking, but okay. That's enough soul. Not yet. That's enough. You broke his nose already. No. Soul! That's enough! Clock needs your help. At the mention of your name, the familiar reddish-orange eyes went wide open before turning to you. Soul quickly went to your side, his eyes wide with shock before crouching down and giving you a hug, his shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however, too stunned to speak to what just transpired before you. The man now lay still on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out on a random corner. Goons. <laughs> you looked up and met with the all-too-familiar eyes of Hugo. But they weren't the kind ones you 
<clears throat> they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Hugo's eyes twitched as he sighed, trying to hide his visible irritation but failing. He looks around at the mess Soul made before turning to check up on you. He said nothing, hands in his pockets while he looks down at you in Soul's embrace. It's getting quite late. We should head home. Hugo tapped Soul's shoulder, making the tall male bury his face further in between your neck before eventually letting go. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry. You weren't sure, but one thing's for sure is that this man had before you cried. He cried for you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you. Soul. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can see both options, but, um... Uh, we'll say thanks, because that's pretty based. Thanks. You reach out to cup his cheek. He flinches at the touch. Tears that he was trying to hold back is now flowing freely down his cheeks. He eventually relaxed as he closed his eyes and leaned onto your hand as he held it. I don't know what I'll deal with. It's okay. It's alright. Here. Beside you, Hugo extended his hand for you to take. You notice on his other hand is the same horse plush you tried to win back in the crane game. He took Hugo's hand as he helped you get up. Soul stands as well, but backs away from you a few steps. We should head back home. It's quite late, after all. Both you and Sol didn't say anything, but not along. Hugo gives both of you a smile before walking away. Hi. Hi, kitty. Sol kept a firm hold of your hand, seemingly afraid to let you go. Hugo lets out a sigh. I guess we can't get in that arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. If they ever come back, I'll give them more than just a broken nose. You're pretty scary right now, Soul. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. Hugo shakes his head. He rummaged through his pockets before handing Soul something. He didn't quite see what it was, but judging on the scowl on Soul's face, he doesn't like it. I told you, those don't work anymore. It's because you aren't taking it, you fool. Now take it tonight. Soul grumbled like a child who got scolded before taking whatever Hugo gave to him, tucked it in his pockets. It's the sleeping pills, by the way. Anyway, your place is just around the corner. You should head back as soon as possible. I'll be taking Clock home. Soul's eyes narrowed. He went from holding your hand to wrapping his arm around yours in a possessive manner, as if as he leaned closer and glared at Hugo. Oh, can I get a stretch check? <clears throat> no. I can walk him home. Clearly, you're not in a good condition to fight again. I can fight again. There's something in Hugo's eyes that made your blood run cold. Hydrate check too. <clears throat> I love drinking water. And you should too, chat. Drink up. The usual happy-go-lucky expression he had on his face was gone. Take a look back at Soul, noticing how unfazed he seemed, as if challenging Hugo. Um, I think we'll walk home with, uh... I think we'll go home with Soul, but let Soul walk you home. Both of them looked at you in surprise. Eleven. Yeah, that's a little bit. Both of them looked at you in surprise. Hugo seemed to, to disapprove of your choice, while Soul's whole demeanor shifted from shock to cocky as he slowly turned his head to his shorter friend. You heard him. Hugo, I can handle this. I can walk Clock home. Clock trusts me. I want you to trust me, too. Hugo looks at his friend in wild disbelief, almost as if offended by what Soul said. He took notice of the way his fist tightened, causing his veins to bulge out from the force he exerted. Eventually, he gives up with a sigh. Hugo turns to you. If it's fine for you, Clock, then I can't force you. The shorter male didn't say anything afterwards. He then turned on his heel. Hugo walks away. You and Soul stare at his back until his figure becomes smaller. The light post no longer illuminates the path he walked on. Is he always like that? Rubbing the redness away from his eyes, he turns to you. Like what? Like, really bossy, especially towards you. I thought he's the happy-go-lucky type. Guess he can't judge a book by its cover. Soul didn't say anything. His gaze lingered on the now-empty path where Hugo had headed. He takes your hand and wraps his finger around yours with a smile on his face. He looks happy. 
What matters is that you're here with me right now. Shall we get going? Huh. Please excuse the place's condition right now. I didn't expect a visitor to come this evening. You said with a bit of a chuckle, rubbing the back of your head as you welcome Soul inside your apartment. I don't mind. Welcome to him inside the apartment. Soul eventually takes a step inside your apartment, but did not go any step further and remain by the door. Soul's figure was a bit stiff as he lingered by the entrance. Maybe you need some convincing that it's alright to come in. Taking hold of Soul's hands, you led him to the living room and made him sit on the couch. Upon taking a seat, Soul placed down the horse plush you won for him on the table beside him. His whole demeanor, however, still remained rigid. You don't need to be so stiff, Soul. Just make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm just not used to being in other people's spaces, much less their homes. Really? Not even Hugo's? Soul just shakes his head. You begin to ponder. However, your train of thought was cut short when Soul started flexing his knuckles. That's right. Stop what you're doing and wait here. I'll go grab the medical kit. Don't you even dare strain your fists any further. You really don't you don't really have to do all of this clock. You tutted, placing your hands on your hips. My house, my rules. Plus, I did insist on treating your wounds. Soul didn't say anything, but just let his hands relax. He still looks stiff, but through your words, he loosed his shoulders just a tad bit. Yeah, this is new. You hurriedly ran to your room and ran into the bathroom connected to it and took the first aid kit before returning to the living room. Once you returned, you took the empty space right beside Soul. Hands. You say that like I'm some sort of dog. You are my dog. You're wearing a collar. Bark for me. Despite his remark, he did as you told him, and showed you his hands. Taking his hand on yours, you your eyes furrowed at the gash and a few blisters adorned on his once pale knuckles. Taking a disinfectant and a piece of cotton from the kit, you lightly dabbed the formula on the cotton. This might sting a bit. Soul didn't say anything, taking it as a sign to proceed. He gently dabbed the cotton onto the bruises of his knuckles, earning a few hisses here and there from him. He did the same to his other hand, but this time he was silent. Seemingly used to the stinging pain. After disinfecting the wound, you took out some gauze, bandages, and wrapped it around his knuckles. Busy wrapping the bandages that you failed to notice how he kept looking at you while you were patching him up. You only realized this when you finished when you finished wrapping his hands. You look up and your eyes met with his reddish-orange orbs. Orbs that reminded you of summer daisies of a rare breed. But the word summer doesn't really quite fit him. Instead, he reminds you of the harsh and cold winters of fall. Harsh and cold winds of fall. Despite his icy exterior, he has shown you nothing but warmth, like a fuzzy scarf to shield you from the freezing autumn winds. He hasn't let go of his hands from yours yet. Oh? Let's give him a little kissy on the knuckle. You have no idea which made you do what you did next, but you raised his hands in yours and pressed your lips on his bandaged knuckles. He did not jerk his hands away, but the look of pure shock was displayed on his face. His face went red while his eyes grew wide like saucers. Soul lets out a low and nervous cough, tilting his head to the side in a shy manner. I'm not a kid anymore, you know. But it makes you feel better, right? <laughs> his silence was enough of a confirmation. He eventually let go of his hands and he pouted when you did. He stood up from the couch, your gaze lingers on his sitting figure. Do you, th do you need anything else, Soul? A cup of water, perhaps? No, there's not. There's no need. Oh, come on, Sonny. <laughs> A brow raised with mild curiosity at the familiar nickname you uttered. Sonny. Yeah, Sonny. There's a slight pause. The air was still. You felt nervousness starting to crawl up your skin. Sorry, that one's reserved for Hugo, his boyfriend. You rubbed the back of your neck. S sorry, I guess that's quite too bold of me to casually give you a nickname all of a sudden. No. It's just that I'm used to hearing that from Hugo's mouth. Well, only from Hugo. How about calling me something else? You don't mind a nickname? If Hugo's going to give me one, why not you? Give Soul a nickname. Don't give him a name. I mean, he seems to really like this. Oh, I got... Wait, how did I get a point with you? <laughs> Five. That's kind of random. I got a point with him and he's not even around. Call him Pumpkin? Call him Pumpkin? I'm gonna call him fucking Mosshead. 
Give Soul a nickname. <laughs> no, give Soul a nickname. Note the last name you input will be the nickname used if you press enter. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Baby girl. I um, am not doing that. <laughs> Call him So. Moss head. Damn. <laughs> I see someone likes Moss head. I like Moss head. It's always funny. Marimo. Marimo. I'm gonna name him Dumb Cat Boy. How about that? But I feel like if I give him a nickname, it's just gonna call him that like throughout the rest of the game. Cause he's got because he got that sword. Wait, he doesn't have a sword, does he? No. He's got a hot dog. Yeah, if you're referring to his hot dog. Hey hey. Sweetheart. Okay. Alright, Octo. Get out of here with your cringe. Cringe! Marimo. Hmm. Emo killer. Wait, he just is emo. He'd kill himself. No! I'm not naming him So Hiori. Bro, no one else is cringe? I mean, I think everyone just said joke names. I think. Yeah, everyone said joke names but you. <laughs> Sorry, Octo. You win the cringe. You won the cringe. Honey pot, sweetie pie, sweetie pie. <laughs> Name him gas station sushi. <laughs> what, you don't like sweetheart? You don't like that one? I like sweetheart. I think it's fine. Hmm. Just be like, hey, sweetheart. Moi, 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 moi. No, if I gave him one, I'd probably call him darling, but. Yeah. That's gay. not... That's gay. Okay, Ginger just called me gay. Ginger doesn't like it because I call her darling. You make my eye twitch. Thank you. I'm not giving him a nickname, chat. Fuck that. I'll pass. Shy all of a sudden. No, I just couldn't think of any other good nickname. That's all. Never mind. Walk it back. You're getting Marimo. Yeah, Moss head. Yeah, you got Moss head. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Moss head. Yes, Moss head. Quite fitting for someone like you, huh? You nudge and wink at him. Soul merely smiles and shakes his head. He looks up at you and, and admired your face. <laughs> sure, Clock. You can call me Moss head whenever you like. Now that's done. With a hand over his heart, he gives you a knowing look. Gaze serious as if he's about to make a vow. Let me repay your kindness, Claw. <laughs> Chat hated that one, and I'm glad. One Piece fans stay winning, though. Let me repay your kindness, Clock. Hey, you don't have to, Soul. It's the least I could do as your friend. No, I insist. I can make you dinner tonight if you'd like. That won't be necessary. <laughs> Before you could protest, however, you could feel your stomach rumble. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm... <clears throat> <clears throat> I, I need to drink some water, and I'm having a bit of a problem with my throat today. <clears throat> Thank you. Everybody, please take a sip. Before you could protest, however, you could feel your stomach rumble. The sound was loud enough to be heard, which earned a low chuckle for <gasps> a soul. Not on my watch, mister. Your hands need to rest. I'll do the cooking. Before Soul could retort to insist on cooking, you pulled him up from his seat and started pushing him towards the kitchen dining room. Is there anything you like and I don't like? Nothing, really. As long as it's from you. How about you have a nice tall glass of orange juice, Soul? Smiley face. But really, I'm fine. You've done enough for me already, Clock. I'm just doing this to return the favor. You shake your head no before forcing him back to his seat. Soul sighed and gave up, propping his elbows on the wooden table as he looked at your figure. Happy that he complied, you turned to stare at your kitchen sink. What the fuck are you going to cook? You've never had a guest before. Heck, even Crow has never entered your apartment. And you never you had no other friends to even call over to hang out. Oh, this isn't his first time in your apartment. Are you really this lonely? While you were in the middle of fighting your own thoughts, Soul hummed a tune. 
You hear him drag his chair to stand up and you soon find his tall figure now looming behind you. He held his hands behind his back as he inspected your cupboards. Seems like your kitchen is quite empty. Er... Well... It's not completely empty. Everybody, take a sip, please. <sighs> Reaching out towards the cupboard above you, he pulled out a box of curry powder and gave it to you. Oh! This could work. Do you want me to say cupboard or cupboard? Cupboard. You want me to say cupboard? I'll say it either way. I say it either way. Honestly, I swap back and forth. I'll look forward to it. Cupboard is wrong? It's not. It's just a different pronunciation. Ginger's yelling at me to say cupboard. Cabinet. An idea then struck you. Struck you. What if you help me make those cute food like the ones you made this afternoon? You mean the bento box I made for Hugo? I can. But does that mean I can work in the kitchen? Not a single figure. Finger. Herc. <laughs> That's a new face. I don't think we've seen that one yet. Herc. Soul Muley pouted. He placed the box of curry on the counter as he crossed his arms and leaned on his back, his gaze not leaving your figure. All right, pumpkin. Let's see what you've got. I'll lead as you go. Using your phone, you searched up on how to make simple curry, checking the list of ingredients that you thankfully had on hand before preparing everything on the counter. Soul checks around and lets in an approving hum. He begins by telling you to prepare the ingredients. Thankfully, you have most of it lying around. You wash the potatoes and carrots and proceed to peel the skin off one by one. Soul still remains right beside you, his arms now crossed as he observes. When you set aside the vegetables, however, he suddenly takes out a knife from your knife holder, along with your chopping board, then moves to chop the vegetables. You were about to protest, but stopped yourself when he gave you a side eye. A smirk on his face as he cut them neatly and in equal sizes. He has experience, and he made it clear. Show off. <laughs> After cutting them, he sets the chopped vegetables in a bowl as he awaits the rest from you. I, I get that. I, I get that. As someone who cooks a lot, I get it. Could have handled it on my own, you know. Yeah, you can. But what if I'm stubborn like that? Well, at least this makes the work faster. Exactly. You eventually finished peeling the carrots and took the knife from Sol, shoving, shooing him away and taking his task. Sol complied and went back to leaning on the counter. He looked at the perfectly cut potatoes and carrots. Did he make flower-shaped carrots? Well, how did you do this? Do what? This, it's so cute. Do you want me to teach you? Wait, let me do it first. I want to see how I can replicate it. Oh, easy. By wasting a lot of carrot. <laughs> Grabbing a piece of the sliced carrot, you try to replicate the flower-shaped carrots Soul did. However, every time you manage to cut one, a piece of petal would fall, fall off. Again and again and again. Arr. Place the knife down, lifted your sleeves up, and continued on. You're too focused on trying to cut a piece of carrot to fully realize that a large pair of bandaged hands were now on top of yours. Oh, there we go. Soul's figure loomed behind you, his torso pressed to close to your back as he leaned his face right next to yours. Ah, there's a, that's a new CG, right? Yeah. His breath fanned your cheek while you stand frozen. You can feel the heat slowly rising up to your cheeks. Calm down. Let me help you. Hee hee hee. Ha ha. With his guidance, he leads you with utmost care. Don't cut too no. much. <laughs> Don't cut too much. That's how you manage to accidentally cut off a petal. Do this instead. You couldn't focus. Your heart was beating too fast. The rumble his chest makes whenever he speaks echoes through you. He feels heartbeat as well. He was beating as fast like yours. You let him lead you, like a puppet to its master. There. This looks better. You were too distracted by his overall presence that you didn't realize how the once round carrot was now in the shape of a blossom. It only hit you once, you step, once he stepped out, his arms around you gone, and he was off your back. You look down at the masterpiece before you. Ah, you make them so pretty. I think you can make them prettier. Just follow what I did. Um, that's the problem. I wasn't paying attention. You weren't paying attention, were you? You avoided his gaze. He lets out a chuckle. I can show you again. I think that, that, that that's alright. We're running out of carrots anyway. Just need to chop the rest of the potatoes and we're done prepping. 
Want me to help with the potato? Sit down, mister! While you're cooking with soul's aid and instructions, of course, the said man took the honor of making orange juice, claiming it was less of a risk. Since he kept on insisting to help, you let him be. Damn it! He made the orange juice. Fuck! Soul sets the table while you turn on the, turn off the stove. The curry's aroma fills the dining room. The curry was hot and steam rose from the pot as you carried it by the handles with mittens on your hands. You then set it on the table. Soul sat across the table. The orange juice he made in a pitcher now settled on the table as well with two glass cups. Wait, he made orange juice? Wait, did you just have ten oranges in your house to, to squeeze? There ain't no way, bro. There's no way you had ten oranges. Motherfucker, I know how much orange you need to make orange juice. Two, a pitcher and two glasses, my ass. More than ten oranges. Just two glasses would probably be like ten oranges. You sat down in your seat as well. Oh, hey. Thank you for the food. <laughs> Look at this. This is not a good combo, by the way. I don't know about rice, curry, and peas, and orange juice. But I like it. But I like it. Haha. <laughs> Thank you for the food. Thank you for the food. Wow, this smells so good. Without wasting time, you took a spoonful of warm curry and rice, blowing the steam away, then plopping it in your mouth. The cat is currently attacking Ginger. Being on my back. <laughs> hmm, wonder if you put them in the pitcher of OJ or in our glass. Probably in the glass already, because he poured it out. <laughs> you let out a joyful hum. Soul just chuckled as he ate his own portion of the curry. This is nice. This is cool. You're looking at the thumbnail, by the way. You're going to see this in the thumbnail for sure, by the way. I'm going to save this because this is animated. I'm a little worried that you won't see this unless I save it. So, A little joyful hum hum. Maybe not, though. You might see the death ones, actually. I don't know yet. Soul just chuckled as he ate his own portion of curry. Although you might just see this one, and then I'll have, like, the dead face here. <laughs> You should write down the spices you made me add. I didn't think they would have tasted this good. I'll list them down once you're done eating. Couldn't argue with that. You discard the dishes in the sink after dinner. It is a CD? Awesome. You and Soul sat in the kitchen for a while, somehow finding yourselves talking about food as you drank what was left of the orange juice. Soul still making himself comfortable on the dining table. It's just because the other um, animated CG... Um, they didn't include that in the album, so I can send <clears throat> I can send you a few of my favorite dishes if you want to try them. That'd be great. I'd like to learn more from you if given the time. Of course, anything for you, Clock. Soul smiles at you. Look back to what happened today and how much he's been with you. From making you feel safe to making you laugh to actually protecting you. And now he just casually helped you make dinner, even though you just bandaged his wound like any other normal person would do. Cooking with him, dining with him, it all seems so domesticated. Like you and him are... You took another swig of the orange juice, chugging it down to the last drop, catching Soul by surprise. He's like, why did I do that? He's like, less time now. You feel your heartbeat quicken and the familiar warmth of your face heating up again. You let out a yawn. Ugh. Oh, excuse me. What time is it? Yeah, it's 8.45. Not late already. I've been taking too much of your time, Soul. You still need to go home. Okay, I... Okay, pills don't work that quick, okay? It's a school day. Tomorrow. You rub your eyes. Another yawn escapes your lips. Ugh. No. Don't worry about it too much, Clock. I feel quite happy you let me in and treated my wounds. Not to mention sharing dinner as well. Soul wanted to say something, but he stops himself before he could utter the words in his mind. Instead, he leaned in closer. His eyes were half-lidded as he looked at you expectantly. Why are there three of him? <sighs> Your head is getting dizzy. You seem tired, Pumpkin. No, I'm fine. Let me get let me get you the door. Your eyelids felt heavy from the sudden creeping drowsiness that wrapped around you. You rubbed your eye, trying to shake off that heavy feeling. Hey yo! I saw that! Hey, I can turn it back. <laughs> I see your face. 
Your hand lost its strength. Something slipped and glass shattered on the floor. Beyond your fading vision, you caught Sol's smile. His hand pushing away that glass of orange juice that had never been touched. Oh, he, d he did just drug the whole thing. Wait, in this route, you find... Wait, in this... I'm assuming we're gonna forget. But... Oh. <laughs> hey, I wonder if that has anything to do with the NSFW route. He looks at his figure now passed out on the table before him. He turns to stare at the pitcher half-filled with orange juice as he crunches the packet of pills in his pockets, the very same packet Hugo gave him before coming into the apartment. Taking the pitcher and his glass of orange juice, he drained it all out and placed them in the sink before returning to Clock's side, not minding the shards of broken glass he's stepping on. Oh. He gently lifts Clock's hands. Hey, yo, Kilo Berry! Hey, hey, yo! I do not need to hear your kinks! What the hell? Then drops it. And just like a motionless ragdoll, he remains unconscious. A smirk makes its way to his face. He gently placed his hands on his shoulders before leaning in close to his neck, taking a deep inhale of his scent. He shivers in delight. <sighs> he gently wrapped Clock's arm around his shoulder before carrying them in his arms like a groom to his spouse. Let's get you to bed, Pumpkin. He entered Clock's room, seemingly familiar with the layout as if he's been through here multiple times. He carefully walks towards the bed and gently lays Clock down on his duvet. The corners of his lips turn upwards, his eyes twitching. He then proceeds to lie down next to his sleeping figure, wrapping his arms around his abdomen and pulling his body closer to his, spooning him in the process. He buries his face on his neck. Like before, soul inhales clock scent like an addictive perfume. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I can't help but do it. It's so funny to me. A shiver went down his spine as he can feel his pants tighten from the mere scent of his beloved. <laughs> oh my darling clock. I feel so flattered that you trust me so, so much, despite just meeting me yesterday. Isn't this pr enough proof that you're meant to be mine, as I was meant to be yours? Your soul resonates with mine. He makes himself comfortable, his arms still wrapped around, keeping his gaze on the apple of his eye, a wicked smile still settled on his face. He snuggled closer, hearing Clock's steady heartbeat through the veins of his neck. I love you so much, Clock. I want you to realize. I want your soul to realize. I know that it'll take some time. But I'm getting impatient, sweetheart. When will you realize? He asked under his breath as if hoping for some answer from the sleeping man caged within his arms. But only his soft and steady breathing filled his ears. He tightened his hold around him. His eyes didn't flutter shut as his thoughts kept him up until midnight. Some day, one day, Clock, you'll learn the truth. Sorry that you've been drugging me? Excuse me! To be contondered, again. What are we on? Like, fucking seven, bro. Fucking seven. I mean, whatever, man. Okay, that's the kid at the back. Soul's route. We got one more route to go. <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> now, by the way, if you are playing the NSFW version of the game, which you can pay for right now, go to the link in the description below, support the creator. Um, if you do what I did and you get to that point in the game, there is some NSFW. All right? All right. Okay. So now... We're going to do Crow's Route. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, we're going to load up. Oh, first, we're going to go... Actually, first... Okay, wait, where is it? Um... Uh, where is it? I think it's... That was four, okay. This one... Yeah, this one. Okay, wait. First, before we do that, um, I just wanted to do this because there's one more CG for Soul, actually. <laughs> also, hold and then refuse to skip. I couldn't afford to skip this one. Although the idea of skipping seems thrilling, 
Can't afford to skip this one. Who knows what's important? What projects your teacher is going to throw at you, and you're going to end up behind just because of skipping one class. Thank you for the offer, you two, but I can't afford to miss this one. Hugo's shoulders slumped down, quite disappointed. That's all right. Maybe we can have na hang out next time, then. Soul turns to you. Would you like me to accompany you to your next class? Of course. I appreciate that, Soul. I'll see you at the usual spot, Soul. Soul nods at Hugo before the said male walks away, waving off as he leaves. You and Soul walk through the hallway towards your next class's classroom. You couldn't help but check on Soul. He seems nervous. You look down and see that his hand is shaking. What do I do? Fuck it, A, dude. I'm already on seven, dude. Take his hand. Reaching to his hand, you gently wrap your hand around his. His hand stopped shaking and he went stiff. Eventually relaxed and intertwined his fingers with yours. This makes you smile. The walk was silent, but no need, no words needed to be said to see the growing smile on his face. On his face. You finally reached the front of your classroom door. You peeked inside through the window, door's window and saw Crow in his usual seat already. You turned your attention back to Soul. Just then, your classroom's door opened and there stood Crow. His eyes perked upon seeing you. There you are, Clock. Just in time for the next class, too. I just noticed Soul's presence behind you. His eyebrows perked up as he give, gave the tall students a soft smile. And hello there, Soul. What brings you here? Soul, however, was silent, his gaze dark before responding. Just escorting Clock. That's really sweet of you to do, Soul. Crow didn't mind the mail any longer before returning his attention back to you. You should probably get in. The professor is coming any time now. Oh, right. Thank you again, Soul, for coming with me. You entered your classroom, classroom along with Crow. Failing to see Soul's ever-darkening gaze as his fist clenched, drawing blood. He stares at the door, moving aside as he leaned on the wall right beside the door. Soul looked down to stare at his palm. <laughs> Why does he look disgusted? He's like, uh, ew, why did I do that? Soul's right eye twitched. Looking at the broken skin on his palm, the light in his eyes is gone. Uh, 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 uh. Bro's a damn dog. Bark for me. Bark for me, bro. He raised his palm and licked the blood away. Ichabod. It's always been you. I should have dealt with him years ago. Get it? Because he's licking his hand. Okay, um, so we saw that CG. Awesome. But actually, to see all of Crow's CGs, I'll save here. Sure. But actually... Main menu. So that should be all... So that, that should be all of Souls. Yes, that's all of Souls CGs. Okay. To get all of Crows, we're going to have to reload and uh, we're going to have to drop Soul off completely. <laughs> we're going to have to drop him off the fla pa drop him off the face of the earth, bro. Drop him off the face of the earth. Sorry, Crow. Sorry, Soul. This is just the way it's going to be. So anyways, I don't think we need any points with Crow for this one. So we're going to just stay with the group. Stay with the group. Yeah, we're just going to ignore nor ignore him basically we're just gonna ignore him they seem pretty busy putting away whatever idea you had you returned your attention back to your group of friends so cafeteria everyone cringed not hiding their discomfort no hell no not there i'd rather not daryl how about somewhere else geo just face palmed well where do you suggest Daryl flailed his arms. He thought for a moment as you looked outside. Bushes with a few flowers spreading caught your attention as it blends well with the red and yellows of autumn. Gives you a sense of tranquility. I love autumn, dude. Garden. That's right. I may know a place. Have you guys been to the school's garden behind? Oh, right. The botanical garden used by the pharmacy course. That could be a good idea. There's a space perfect for our little picnic today. But isn't that place locked? Just peeked in. Uh, you smirked before pulling in a set of keys from your belt and dangling them. Jingle, jingle, jingle. I just happen to be a volunteer gardener. Extra credits. I didn't know you garden, Glock. 
Everyone's gaze was on you, curiosity in their eyes. Even Geo's eyebrow raised a bit. Everyone except for Crow. Well, he grew up on a farm. And now everyone's attention was on Crow, catching him off guard by the looks they're giving to him. <laughs> of course you know, lover boy. Brittany whispers under her breath as she rolls her eyes. Jess just giggled. Have a good night. Crow's cheeks burned red from Brittany's comment. Vod will probably be up tomorrow, depending on how late we go. You rubbed the back of your head. You never really got the chance to properly introduce yourself to them, huh? Considering you've just started hanging out with them a week and a half ago, these past months you've only been hanging around with Crow the most. He was your only friend. Maybe this is your time to get to know them and them with you. Brittany let out a sigh as she turned to you. She moved the picnic basket to her other arm and placed a free hand on her hip. Lead the way, clock. You nodded before escorting the group along the back of the school and into the gardens. Oh, we just don't talk to Soul at all here. You inhale the familiar scent of fresh earth. A few leaves dance around the air, guided by the winds of autumn. Before you standing stands the school's own greenhouse. The greenhouse where multiple healthy greens and colorful flora grow. This place is usually occupied by biology and bo botany stu botany students with the occasional science teacher watching over them. You worked a lot of odd jobs at the school to lessen your student loan expenses. Your duties ranged from being a janitor to a teacher's assistant, but none of your positions would last as long as you hoped for, because you always found yourself somehow getting in trouble for some sort of mess you made. You felt hopeless, until your advisor recommended placing you in the greenhouse. With your background and knowledge related to plants, you thought maintaining the greenhouse was a perfect fit. You've been working here ever since. Oftentimes, you think you understand the layout of the place, that you practically know the area like the back of your hand. But every day you seem to discover a new corner that you've never been to before. Sometimes you're not even sure if you're within campus grounds anymore. It's probably because of the forest that has stretched beyond this area. Anyway, there's a large fence preventing you from crossing the border, so you never really bother to explore further unless you want to get in trouble or be accused of slacking off. For now, you wanted to show your group of friends the new discovery you've made while on duty last week. There's a field with a large tree right around the corner. It can make for a perfect shade for our little picnic. You exclaim, earning a, la a look of approval from Brittany, almost as if she's impressed. The rest of the cast follow behind as you lead them to your destination. You hear some gasps of awe behind you. Daryl chuckles heartily in delight. Crow hums, feeling pleasant, and you hear Brittany, Brittany saying, interesting. They're clearly amazed at the field before them, and it fills you with pride knowing that you're able to impress them. Well, come on. The field's great, especially the lion. Let's see what- Ow! Owie! <laughs> Not. Yet. Brittany slapped Daryl's hand away from the basket before he could raid the whole thing, making him wince and pounce. Calm your ass down. You'll have a turn. At this point, I'll have to charge you all at- Charge you all every time y'all hit me! Are you some sort of masochist? <laughs> Daryl gave Gio a side eye. Brittany shook her head while Jess just giggled. Hee <laughs> hee. It was a cute little get-together that Brittany planned last night. She wanted to make a few sandwiches, so she prepared lots of varieties. On the blanket are a few Tupperwares with some of the sandwiches inside while the rest were eaten. Everyone got their fair share already, but now everyone is just minding their own business. Daryl's having the time of his life with two sandwiches in both his hands. Based. <laughs> Brittany and Jess are talking. Gio's a bit further away from the group, leaning on the bark of the tree, seemingly lost in thought. And Crow is nowhere to be seen. Well, we're gonna save. We're gonna do a save. Brother, that's a lot of saves. Let's start from the top of the list. Speak to Geo. You're quite hesitant to approach Geo at first. You always saw him as someone quite intimidating. More intimidating than Brittany. Oh, he looks so cool, though. He reminds me a lot of Scaramooch from Genshin Impact. And it's kind of like a Scaramooch X like Zhang Li. <laughs> it's probably the way he carries himself. His towering height isn't helping either. And it seems like you've been staring at him for too long. <laughs> he stopped chewing on his sandwich as his gaze met yours. You shivered. What do you want? <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> Hurry up and spit it out. Why do you hang out with us? I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just that I'm curious. You don't seem the type to. His piercing gaze made your voice die down. You cursed under your breath. Fuck, I think this is it for me. I get it. But you wouldn't understand. Leave me to my devices. Now. He demanded before wrapping the half-eaten sandwich he had in his hand before throwing it towards you. He caught it, nearly losing your balance. 
And give that to Daryl. I just lost my appetite. Tio then crossed his arms and looked up at the sky. The chilly autumn breeze passed by him, making his long hair sway along with his washy earrings. Washy or washy? I don't know. Take a look at the wrapped hat bean sandwich in your hand. I guess I'll never know. You sigh. Okay, let, yeah, yeah, I'll never know. Wait, what about the other option? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Nothing. If you have nothing to say, then don't bother me. He seems uninterested in talking anymore. His half e sandwich half eaten before throwing in the nearest trash bin. I think it's best not to disturb him. Never mind. That was horrible. He wasted food. He wasted food, chat. He wasted food with that. I'll go back. I don't care. Speak to Daryl. Give him his sandwich. Daryl seems to be the least busy out of everyone. He approached his sitting figure as he took a seat in front of him. One sandwich gone from his hand as he munched on the other and one on his other hand. He notices you and stops eating, tucking away the sandwich and placing all of his attention on you. Don't worry, we reloaded. Here. He took out the half-eaten sandwich he got from Gio and handed it to him. He tilted his head to the side. You can't finish yours. It's from Gio. Really now? Not gonna lie, that's quite uncharacteristic of him. Usually he would either finish it or throw it away. Not that I'm complaining though. Thanks, Clock. Daryl thanked you with a smile and took the half-eaten sandwich from your hands before tucking it away. Daryl's cool. Daryl's based. You got something to ask me, Clock. Oh my god, I got... Okay, well, let's go. About Geo. What are your thoughts on Geo? Daryl smiled as he leaned a bit forward. Now, Geo's my favorite guy. Even if he's a bit of a meanie at times. He makes you stick to him. Isn't he mean to you like you said? Daryl's smile brightened as his eyes went soft. His side eyed the male by the tree who had his arms crossed. Geo's attention was somewhere else. People are scared of him. It's probably because of his background. What about it? The thing is, no one really knows what his family does other than the fact they're super rich and that they are highly involved with the founder of this city. People have seen him with his bodyguards, all rugged and tall and very intimidating. Heck, I even saw one with a huge katana on their backs. You shivered. Clearly, you don't want to deal with them. But what makes you not scared, Daryl? I mean, you clearly know what his family and himself is capable of. You see, Clock, I'm not really scared of him. On the outside, he's all stubborn and cruel. But on the inside, he's a really nice guy. Think of him like, uh... First his lips, thinking a bit. He's like a stubborn cat. Glance back at Gio one more time. You're seeing the cat ears and the tail, all right. Now that you think about it, with this vision based on Daryl's declaration, Gio does not seem quite intimidating anymore. How cute. Then you hear a sigh from Daryl. You returned your attention to him, an elbow on his leg as he held his face in his hand. Which begs me to wonder how he ended up being in the lower class with us. The low class? How do we have things like that? Oh? You don't know about the hierarchy, Clock? You shook your head no, and Daryl scratched the back of his head. Oh, damn, well, Clock, everybody, almost everyone knows about it. But I don't blame you, since no one really likes bringing that type of subject up. I think either Crow or Jess would like to explain it to you. Just not Brittany. She gets all riled up when it's mentioned. You nod in understanding and Daryl gives you a smile. Anyway. Okay. Uh, down the list. About yourself. Like to know more about you, Daryl. Daryl rubbed the back of his head. Quinn embarrassed you thought about him. Well, aren't you a flatterer? Ahem. Where should I start? He thought for a while. His legs crossed while you waited for him as he pondered. Well, I am the ace of my football club. I hate my coach, but don't tell him that. Hmm. I love food. Like lots. My f most favorite would be sweets. If you ever get on any, get any on ya, smuggle me some, will ya? He says with a wink and a nudge. Other than that, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. About Jess. What do you think about Jess? <laughs> At the mention of Jess's name, Daryl's whole face turned red as he started sweating. What about her? Uh, I don't know. I'd like you to tell me. What do you think about her? Daryl's cheeks just keep getting redder and redder. For a moment, his gaze turned to where Jess and Brittany were. He sighs as he looks away. Uh, Jess is... the sweetest human being I've ever met. Oh? Uh, but don't tell anyone. I trust you with this because Crow trusts you, okay? Alright, alright. I don't know what the big fuss yet, but I promise I won't tell. You raised your hands in surrender. The taller jock deflated on his spot. His shoulders down along with his mood. But, yeah, she's sweet, she's pretty, 
She's cute. While some would make fun of me, she's always there to give me a pat on the back. He groans, doubling over. His expression seems like he wants to throw up as he buried his face in his hands. Oh, But I doubt she likes me back. You tilted your head, wondering why he thinks that way. What makes you say that? The way she looks at Brittany. Don't you think that's the look of someone in love? At that, your eyes widened in surprise. You quickly turned your head to where the two girls were. The eyes behind the transparent frames looked like the fresh citrus oranges in summer. They were bright, and they were fresh for the picking for Brittany. I know, because that's the same look I gave to her when I first met her. And it's the same look I see on Crow when he looks at you. He twirled a loose strand from his bangs. He looked away from the two girls and focused on your surprised figure. I hate it. But I love seeing that look on her face. I wish it was on me, though. Uh, I'm sorry, Daryl. <laughs> he chuckled a bit. It's all right. Maybe one day I'll confess just to get it off of my chest. All I want is to see her happy. Based. Even if it's not with me. So fucking based. Anyway, enough of this sad shit clock. Got something to ask. Okay, now about Brittany. Daryl gives you a proud smile. Brittany, she's my first friend back when I was new to the football team. You'd be surprised that she used to be in the cheer squad, despite her being quite introverted. She was? Daryl's bright smile softened, a small gloomy look in it. He's trying so hard to hide it, but it was failing. Yeah. She quit right after the game's big frat party, like two years ago. That party was something else, since the higher classes were also a part of it. The following day, she suddenly quit. I don't know why, though. Not quite worth thinking about the past, anyway. Hmm, future lore. About Crow. About the past lore. What do you think about Crow? Mention of this blue-eyed friend of his, Daryl gives you a toothy grin as he wiggles his eyebrows. You want your... You want jeets on... You want jits on your little crushy, don't you, Clock? S shut up. I just admire him, okay? Daryl laughed and stopped his teasing, saving you from further embarrassment. Crow is quite an individual. All I know is that he's the son of a very successful businesswoman in the city. Though I heard he doesn't have a great relationship with his family. What makes you say that? Daryl thought for a bit, but judging from his expression, he couldn't understand why either. I don't know either, Clock. You should ask Crow for that if you want to learn more. I see. Don't worry, Clock. I'm sure he'll do anything that you ask for. Gives you a playful wink. You rolled your eyes, but gave him a smile nonetheless. Thank you for answering my questions, Daryl. Anytime, Clock. You're one of us now, so open up a little. But you didn't ask me any questions. Nothing else to ask. Daryl gives you a smile before nodding. Okay, so now to Brittany. Brittany was minding her own business, seemingly tapping away on her phone. You kind of shy to come any closer to her. But before you could turn and leave, however, she called out to you. She must have seen you from the corner of her eye. Oi, Clock. Come here. Oi, oi, oi. Don't be a stranger now. You clearly want to talk. Let me guess. Were the sandwiches great? I'm convinced. They were wonderful, Brittany. She smiled at your response. I'm glad you liked them, Clock. Anyway, enough of my sandwiches. Brittany, your sandwiches bring all the boys to the yard. Also, uh, uh, I'm looking respectfully. I'm looking respectfully. Sorry, what? You have something to tell me. Have you seen Crow? Crow? I think I saw him go deeper in the gardens. Nobody bonked me. That was worthy. That was worthy. I was looking respectfully at her face. Ow! <laughs> Brittany said with a raise of her brows. Let me guess. Why is she so pretty? What the hell? Actually, her face is actually really pretty here. Let me guess. You want to finally confess your undying feelings for him. What makes you think that? Wow. I'm not sure who is denser. Him or you. Whatever. If you need him... He's probably in the greenhouse. Brittany gives you a thumbs up and mouthing a good luck. As if I'm confessing, you thought with a pounce. Brittany just gives you a teasing smirk. Anyway, enough of that. Okay, uh, thoughts on Daryl? Brittany just chuckled. You mean that meathead? He's an idiot. She says with a smile, and then she sighed. <sighs> she shakes her head at the thought of the tall jock. He's an idiot, but he's a smart idiot. I'll give him that. He's like a brother to me. It just baffles me how he barely has any friends. How this school fails us. She shakes the idea before turning her attention back to you. Okay. Uh, Geo? 
Brittany raised an eyebrow. Don't tell me you got the hots for him. N nothing of the sorts. What makes you think that? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you do. I can see how his locker is often filled with multiple love letters and gifts from various people. Then I wouldn't be surprised. He's that popular? A loner like him? You'd be surprised. Tall, mysterious, and dangerous. Everyone just flocks to him like birds. But people are scared to even get close to him. So the next best thing they could do is to send him gifts. They never succeed, though. Is he somehow overwhelmed by the attention? Not really overwhelmed, but more like he's uninter uninterested. He either doesn't read the letters and tosses them out, or... Or... He burns them. He burns them? That's so mean! And a waste of gifts, too! Brittany just laughed, her shoulders shaking. That's Geo to you. How do you know all of this? Brittany giggled before giving you a wink as she pressed a manicured finger on her lips as if to shush you. I know a lot of secrets. Anyway. <laughs> okay. And finally on Jess. Upon hearing her name, Jess's head turned to where you both were. Brittany dismissed her, telling her it's nothing for her to worry about before turning back to you. Jessie, she's my best friend. She smiled as she looked at the orange band on her wrist. My very best friend. Uh, when no one was there to help me, she was there. You'd be surprised how confident and loud she is when she's mad. Brittany chuckled a bit as if reminiscing a fond memory. I owe it all to her for bringing me back during those dark times. But enough of the past. Oh. Okay, nothing else. Brittany gives you a nod before standing up from the ground. Stretches her limbs with a few satisfying pops, and she places a hand on her hip. I'll be cleaning a bit. I'll talk to you later, Clock. You don't want any help? No thanks. I appreciate the thought, though. Not as as you stood up, as well, leaving Brittany to attend to her own devices. Finally, Jess. Oh. It's Jess. I still can't tell if this is her back or her... F this is her back. This is her back, right? But... If that's her left arm, which it is, and she's raising it... Is this her thumb? Is that hand backwards? Did I say this in the first video? Daniel? Confirmed? <laughs> Did I? Whatever. Jess was admiring the few orange leaves slowly falling from the tree. The slow descent of a leaf catches her attention before gracefully catching it with her delicate fingers. She notices you approaching her. She dropped the leaf before giving her full attention to you. Sorry, it's been a year. I don't remember what I thought of last time. I normally don't point out that sort of thing, but... It just really made me look at it for a second. <laughs> Poor Jess. Yes, Clock? What seems to be the problem? Oh, there's nothing. By the way, that's no slight to the artist. It's honestly awesome. Like, all the art in this game is really fucking good. And uh, I really enjoy it, so, yeah. And I'm really happy that they even gave CGs to the side characters. That's awesome. Oh, there's nothing, actually. I just want to talk to you and ask a few questions. Then by all means, go ahead. I'll try best, my best to answer them. You have questions to ask? Have you seen Crow? G Jess's eyebrows furrowed and shakes her head. I don't think I know where Crow is. Maybe you should ask Brittany. Maybe she knows. He thanked her. Okay, uh, Geo? <laughs> Jess's shoulders started shaking at the mention of the tall and stoic individual. I hate to be one of those people, but he actually scares me. Have you seen how capable he is with his bow and arrow? Based. I used to do archery. My dad had a bow, and I stole it. <laughs> it was just in the garage collecting rust. And I practiced a little bit of archery, and I always loved it. I never got a chance to do... Like, there was no archery clubs or anything where I grew up. I never got to do anything. But I did practice myself a little bit, and it was a lot of fun. I wish, I really wish I got to do more. No. Actually, is he really that good? I only know that he's from the archery club. Oh, then you should definitely attend the sports event next year. Geo is going to comp compete, and the higher classes will be there to determine if the students are worth bringing up. Another shiver went up her spine. She wrapped her arms around herself. A bad memory crosses her mind. But whenever that happens, Geo some seems to somehow miss his target, and nearly hits someone with his arrow. Based. 
Daniel, same? True. Archery's cool as fuck. What the fuck? Thankfully, it only cut the ha guy's hair and nothing else. He got disqualified, sadly, but that was enough for me to not mess with him. How is he not in jail? Try to rack up your brain for a reason why he's in school and not behind bars. However, it just cuts you off before you can think any further. N enough of that. Questions? Yeah, on Daryl. Always wanted to try it. If you ever get a chance, it's a lot of fun. It's a bit expensive, I guess, to buy it. Um, obviously, best in the, the comfort of your own home. And obviously, dangerous and I'm pretty sure illegal to do outside your home. Uh, unless you go to, like, a place. So, there's, like, clubs and, like, archery clubs and stuff you can join, like, if your city has them. It's just not very popular. There's also something called HEMA in Europe that I really wanted to do. HEMA is, like basically like like this like sanctioned fucking night fighting and it's like guys in like like they practice swordsmanship like actual swordsmanship different types of swordsmanship sparring and shit in full suits of like armor sometimes it's really fucking cool and like they teach all these different types of like actual actual use like swordsmanship and different like medieval weapon styles it's really fucking cool daniel you should do that join the hema club today for me do it let me live through you. <laughs> At the mention of Daryl, Jess's face went bright. It's probably the first time you've seen her smile without shaking like a lost lamb. Oh, Daryl. He's an amazing friend. Keeps me safe and I owe it up to him quite a lot. Though I do feel quite bad for him most of the time. Brittany and Geo tease him way too much. Too expensive? True. <laughs> Jess chuckled, looking at the jock sitting under the tree before returning back to you. He's a funny guy. I remember back then when I made the mistake of giving him a bowl filled with candy last year's Halloween. He did tell me he likes sweets. Why? What's wrong with giving him candy? Well, he gets sugar rushed pretty quickly and gets super hyper. Brittany tried so hard in calming him down. Can you imagine a six foot tall jockey going around like a playful puppy? I bet Brittany didn't have a fun time. Just nodded with a closed smile at you. Questions? And Brittany. What do you think about Brittany? Upon mentioning the Gyaru's name... Oh, okay, she is supposed to be Gyaru, like, style. I was curious. I didn't mention it. I didn't want to... I didn't want to guess, so I didn't say anything, but she reminded me of a Gyaru from, like, Japan. A, one, at least a type of Gyaru. Brittany's head turned to the both of you. She didn't say anything, but raised a brow and she tilted her head to the side. You called for me. N nothing, Brit. Jess quickly shoot her best friend away. Brittany shrugged before continuing on with her own business. Jess lets out a sigh of relief as a small tint of red raises to her cheeks. Jess looked down in her skirt, fiddling with her pink wristband as her heartbeat quickened. Brit, she's my best friend. My very best friend. And I would do anything to see her happy again. She pushed back her black glasses and looked at you. There you saw the sparkles. Her smile soft and you can tell. Jess, do you like Brittany? She was hesitant before looking down, nodding as she did so, still fiddling with her pink wristband. Promise not to tell? I promise. Thank you, Clock. This will just be between the two of us. Besides, she gives you a big smile. I'll keep your oh-so-secret crush towards Crow a secret, too. She giggled at your surprised look at the mention of Crow. You rubbed the back of your head as you pouted. Questions? No more questions. Clasp your hands. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you, Clock. You should hang out with us more. And with that, she gives you a wave goodbye. Well, it's time to go looking for Crow. You've pretty much talked with everyone here, and they all seem to be busying themselves. You looked around the garden before moving in deeper into the Red Autumn Wonderland. As you kept moving forward, you were greeted by the greenhouse. Through the transparent glass, you spot a familiar head of brown. You went inside the greenhouse and saw Crow going go through each plant and flower, analyzing each delicate leaf and petal. Noticing he's not alone, you turned to where you were and smiled. I actually used to love, my family used to take us to a big greenhouse. Because uh, my dad, for some of my dad's work, he would do gardening too. Um, and uh, we'd go to a big greenhouse in the area. <clears throat> this is a big. If you live in Canada and you live in Ontario, you've probably heard the commercials for it. The jingle, the famous jingle of a certain greenhouse. Um, but anyways... We used to go there, and it's always so wonderful walking through and just seeing the plants and shit. It's awesome. Actually, going... To, I've never been to an actual botanical garden. I would love to one day. It'd be really nice, I think. Obviously, in Canada, I'm lucky, and I can go through... I've done lots of hikes in the nature and, like, the woods and stuff. But a botanical garden is really pretty, I hear. 
Noticing he's not alone, he turned to where you were and smiled. Oh, there you are, Clock. What brings you here? I would say the same thing to you. Well, I haven't really explored this place properly before, so why not take that chance? You've never been here? Crow shakes his head. Never got the time to visit. Crow chuckles. You meet his gaze and he gives you a soft smile. His gaze lingered a bit before going around, then found something that caught his attention. Now, this is a pretty looking flora. What do you think it is? He looked at the brush of flowers filled with purple flowers, their petals thin as it showcases its full bloom. This is a passion flower. Fascinating. Tell me more about it. Well, it's a climbing vine plant. Usually its colors are purple or white. Once flowers bloom, passion fruits will bear itself. Usually a volunteer would come and harvest the fruits. That sounds interesting, Clock. But that's the scientific way to describe this flower. How about its meaning? You tilted your head to the side. What do you mean? How do I say this? Places a hand under his chin. In astrology, each star has a meaning behind it. Same goes with gemstones like your birthstone. Ah, this is like a... Um, this is like a Japanese thing. The, uh, the meaning behind like each flower, right? Oh, you can right cl click on, on click on the book that book on the right next to Crow's CG the glossary or yeah there's like one more for them right flowers have those as well correct huh I never really thought of it Crow gives you a cheeky smile it's interesting passion flowers symbolizes hope and growth I love seeing the hopeful look on people looks on people I've I actually was reading about this there's like a whole job that like you can have is like there's like this job in Japan that's like straight up like a job of like flower keeping but it's like it's your job to like know what each flower means and what it means to give them and what each flower like symbolizes and stuff and um and like how they like they like the, you like hire them it's kind of like a florist but like way more in depth basically it's very interesting it says he looks at the flowers before you both I know that there's Obviously, meanings everywhere, like across the world for certain flowers, obviously. I'm just referring to this one thing that I saw one time. Hope. Something this city needs. I want to get rid of the hierarchy. Daryl mentioned something about that. Actually, everyone did. But how, do, how come I've never heard of it? What's it about? I never got to explain it to you, huh? I guess now's the perfect time, since they're quite active in interacting with us in the lower class again. He looks out. Our school, Olympias University, has two buildings with two different classes. One is where we are at the moment, the lower class, while around the northern part of the city is where the higher classes are. There, education is ten times better, facilities are better, and the students are way out of our league. He hesitates a bit in voicing his thoughts of the students in the higher class, though I highly doubt that. He added, his eyes narrowed. Lower class? Calling it lower class is kind of low, in my opinion. I call them villagers, humble people. They're either really kind or either too busy to bother. There's a hint of hesitation in his voice. Well, not all. Failed students in the higher class often end up here with us. And well, they don't take they don't really take take it well, which explains the bullying situation. Crow's brows sli slanted downwards, disgusted by the idea. The fact he can't do anything is irritating him. How come no one tried to file a report or anything? People tried. I tried. We tried. But unless you have- you either have money, or a higher- higher reputation. Heck, even both. They'll bother to even listen. Crow sighs. Which is why some students try their hardest to get the ra get up the ranks. To be part of the higher class. All of that just to be respected? Crow didn't say anything to you but nod. The hierarchy? Crow lets out a sad laugh. The system is kind of a, if you feel it, you feel it thing. You don't really feel it, much less see it, unless you've been at its mercy. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, Clock. You'll never know who's the next victim. A soft, sad smile made its way on his face. Which is why I strive to protect you. But both of those sound... You're left with your thought process to what Crow told you about the newfound information. This probably explains the bullying and how the school is handled. Your position in the city is just a second priority. Heck, maybe not even a priority at all. That means if I ever want to help keep my family's farm up, I have to make it up there. Crow nodded before continuing. 
Once you're up there, you'll have a better life. You'll be respected. You'll be rich. People would do as you tell them. That's messed up. Did people ever protest? Protest? Krog, however, did not answer, as if scared that someone would hear him. He remained quiet, only giving you a look that probably says that things did not go well. You refused to ask for more elaboration. That reminds me, Clock. Crow starts. You never told me as to how or why you chose this university. Your family owns farms, correct? You bit your lip as you thought of home. You should play DDR on stream? Brother, I know what your barely disguised fetish is and you're never seeing my goddamn toes. Even with socks. We do, but I wouldn't say we're doing well. I'm sorry to hear that. I it's okay, really. It's my burden to carry and not yours. <laughs> and I'm going to work hard for it. Anything. I'll do anything. Your eyes widened at the words that the well-dressed man said. Lynn just said, I have a foot fetish, I swear, in my in the auto-mod, literally auto-modded foot fetish, and I find that hilarious. N no, I refuse. <laughs> you are not taking the farm. Can I just skip this? Yes, I can. <laughs> Sorry, we already saw that. But you're nearing the end of the school year, and you cannot afford to go back again. Not with this debt. Credits alone isn't enough to cut it. Whenever you think about it, you keep seeing the tall man's ever-sharp magenta eyes burning into you. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth and a stinging feeling in your chest. Your heart ached as you stare back into Chrome's own azure eyes. <laughs> uh, you're alright there, Clock. You zoned out a bit. If I get to be part of the higher class, then I can have a better chance in life, right? Crow was surprised at your sudden enthusiasm, but nodded regardless. That's right. As you give Crow a reassuring smile, you you clenched your fist. <laughs> Joke's on you. I know what your fetish is. If you join my, if you watch my streams, you got one. Then I'll work hard to show those higher class that I'm worth their time. Crow chuckles and nods. You know that he's got your back. Then Crow raised his hand and tucked a loose strand behind your ear. You sensed him, placing something soft, and you reached out to touch what felt like petals. That looks good on you. Hey, new CG! What a cutie. That looks good on you. What is it? Crow then leads you to a nearby pond. You looked and saw your reflection. On your hair is a red carnation. Oh, I didn't know carnations grew here. Crow only chuckled, fixing the flower on your hair. Crow looked around for a while, basking in the various beauties of flora. What do you think carnation means? Tilted your head, making sure the said flower doesn't fall from your head as Crow continued on with his talk. Fashion flower means hope, while carnations mean... Hmm. I couldn't seem to remember. What do you think it means, Clock? You thought for a while, knowing some carnations to be found in bouquets. Well, it has to be something romantic. They're often a perfect gift to family and loved ones. Is that so? I might have to look up what it means, then. Your eyes met his, and for a moment his gaze lingered. Well, considering I'm pretty sure it's something you hand out to people you like during uh, Valentine's Day as well, too. <clears throat> Were his eyes always this blue? You've never noticed before. The way his lashes flutter and touch his cheeks when he blinks. His plump lips are always glistening whenever sunlight hits them. His eyes went half-lidded as he leaned closer and closer, and as if in a trance, your eyes slowly start to close. Jingle, jangle, jingle, chat. Jingle, jangle, jingle. We're leaning in. Hey. Lean in. As if you lost control of your body and it started moving on its own, you leaned closer as well. Your eyes now closed, feeling his breath near your own lips as he draws closer and closer. But we gotta get going. Wait, wait. Of course, Crow, we better get going. Of course, Brittany. <laughs> your eyes popped open and you quickly backed away. Crow backed away as well as he waved to Brittany. Brittany just raised a brow at the both of you before shrugging it off and leaving the greenhouse. Brittany, the goddamn cock blocker. Sorry, clock blocker. Crow sighed, seemingly disappointed, before giving you his hand for you to take. We should get going. He pouted at the moment, ruined before accepting his extended hand and left the greenhouse with Crow. You and the rest of the, the group got back inside the campus. Everyone already went to their respective classes. I'm going to head back first. I'll see you in class, clock. 
Of course. Corey didn't walk away just yet. He stood there for a while, contemplating something before shaking his head and walking away. A tint of red touching the tips of his ears as he walked. He spotted a familiar head of a raven green and right beside him is a shorter individual. Soul noticed you first and went to you, a noticeable skip in his steps. Glock. Hey, Soul. Who might this be beside you? Eh, skip. <laughs> Are you both heading to your next class? Hugo laughed and a hand on his chest as if he told him a very funny joke. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's skip class. Skip class? Yeah, it'll be fun. Sol gave Hugo a punch on his rib, making the shorter male choke out the words he was supposed to say as he doubled over and clutched his stomach. <coughs> Let's ditch. Hugo just gave him a glare. Sol ignored him as he anticipated your answer. <laughs> Hanging out with these two sounds fun, but you remember your next class with Crow. Maybe you can. I can't skip class. I'm sorry, but I couldn't bear to skip on the second day. Sol didn't say anything as his shoulders slumped, indicating his obvious disappointment. There was something else in the dullness of his eyes. You were interrupted, you were interrupted by Hugo. That's alright, Clock, but promise you'll hang out eventually. On a weekend, then, I'm sure. Wait. Sol spoke, making you and Hugo look at him. Can I at least take you to your next class? He asked you. There was a hint of desperation with reddish-orange eyes. You don't see what's the problem with it, so you agreed. Well, I'll see you, th I'll see you at the usual, Soul. Hugo waved to the both of you before walking off. Let's go, shall we? Soul nods as you walk along, Soul following beside you. Boop. <laughs> We're gonna just keep walking. Yeah, fuck. You didn't bother with him anymore as he kept walking. Shaking hand, eventually was shoved in his pocket as you both resumed your walk. Oh, poor soul. You finally reached the door front of your classroom. Oh, yeah. Thank you for escorting me to my class, soul. Oh, it's not a problem. His tiny smile didn't last long in his face, however. His shoulders slumped down. Though I would, though I could have wished you would have come with us. Maybe next time, soul. Maybe we can hang out on a weekend or on a free schedule. Angry eyebrows. Sure. His words contradicted his expression as it lacks enthusiasm. Just then, the door to your classroom opened, and there you met eyes with Crow. Crow's eyes lit up once he saw you. There you are, Clock. Just in time for the next cla- Oh? He was about to greet you, but felt Soul's presence beside him. And who might this fellow be? A classmate of yours. You can say that. Crow, this is Soul. He's from my art class. Soul, this is Crow. Pleasure to meet you, Soul. Crow extended out his hand for Soul to shake. Soul just stared at it. <laughs> a few awkward seconds passed before it by before he eventually took Crow's hand. Soul, however, wasn't regulating his strength as he gripped Crow's hand with much force. High line. Crow winced from the pressure, but didn't say anything before Soul eventually let go of his hand. Soul then turned to you. I should be going now, Clock. I'll see you soon. Kind of wish you would have come with. He sighed, reaching out to tuck a loose strand of hair away from his face. From your face, earning him a small blush from you. Soul turned on his heel and walked off. He looked at his retreating figure before Crow eventually tapped your shoulder. We should get going. With one last glance at Soul's retreating figure, you turned around and got inside your classroom. Got to your usual seat, Crow takes his usual seat by the window in front of your own seat, waiting for the classroom to settle down as your professor comes in. All right, class, settle down. Y'all better turn in this upcoming paper if you don't want to end up having no grades in your card. And that means... The professor slams down his thin notebook, the loud slap echoing through the room. You won't be able to graduate. But don't even think about making it up to the higher class with a weak mindset. Now for today's class, I'd like you all to think of a short story based on any type of literature. Bonus points if you can source out where you got your inspiration along with references. I'll be checking those the most. You hear a few whispers from a few of your classmates as they talk with each other. Unfortunately for them, your professor notices them as he slams his thin notebook again on his desk, making some of you jolt from your seats. Now, I can allow you all to head to the library to do your research or stay here and brainstorm. You may begin. Crow stands up from his seat, gathering his things, then turning towards you. I'm going to the library. Would you like to join me? Give him a nod, earning a smile from him as he makes his way towards the exit. Crow waits for you as you gather your things before leaving the classroom and to the library. Unlike lunchtime, where everyone is free, the library contains only a few students, some either doing their student duties, while some doing their own research. 
Same spot then. You read my mind. Of course, it's one of your favorite. It's one of our favorite spots. With a smile on his face, me me makes his way towards your you favorite table near the windows and settles down. <laughs> Damn, I'm so I'm so blushing right now, chat, that I'm just messing up my English. <laughs> Me embarrassed. Meanwhile, you make your way towards the tall bookshelves, scanning through each spine of each book. You try to look for something that might catch your interest. Minutes passed, and nothing seemed to catch your fancy. You signed upon realizing this predicament. <laughs> Don't stare at me, Mikey! Don't stare! That's rude! Giving up, you decided to just pick up your closest book and hope for the best that's decent enough for your paper. Feeling a thick book, you pull it out. And nearly dropping it. It's heavy! Oh, come on! How heavy could a book be? Regaining your balance, you held onto the thick book properly and finally checked the title of the massive tome. The, the Biography of Mary Antoinette. Your eyebrows raise in mild curiosity. This might actually work. You flip it open, and you were met with a very well-drawn portrait of a very prestigious-looking woman. The let-them-eat-cake woman, who never actually said that, I'm pretty sure they said. Flipping through more pages, your eyes land on a drawn figure of the same woman, but her kneeled before a guillotine. A lot of French people lost their heads on that thing, I hear. Quite a spoiler, but you ran through the text below the <laughs> illustration. The execution. Such a gruesome end, you thought. Deciding with this book, you tucked it under your arm for safekeeping. Take a look one last time around the bookshelves, maybe finding something of the same genre. You notice a peculiar book sticking out at the very edge of the bookshelf. A bit worn out and dirty, you're kind of wondering how it ended up there. Inched a bit closer to it, the spine didn't have anything on it besides a few worn edges, bent and littered with dust. Got on your tiptoes as you reach out to grab the book. However, the moment you grab it and pull out, <laughs> the bookshelf started wobbling. You immediately stopped. Keep prying. With determination, you held on the shelf, making sure not to make it wobble with any with wobble any further as you took a firm grip on the warm book. Come here, you. I got it. Whoa. The bookshelf wobbles from the force of you pulling the lone book, threatening to push you down, making your heartbeat quicken from the sheer thought of getting crushed under the tall shelves. You quickly held out your arms wide as you tried to rebalance the shelf, hoping it was enough to stop it from shaking. A few books fell then and there, making you wince. But you successfully stabilized the shelf. You let out a breath you didn't realize you were holding. Hope no one heard that. Anyway, what's this that's so stuck in the damn thing? You flip open the cover only to see a blank page. No author whatsoever save for the paper, the edges of it a bit yellow from age. The dust isn't helping either. You went through a few more pages and there you finally get to see some printed words on it. The various torture devices and executions of the medieval times. How the fuck did this end up in a school library? Then again, I might be able to get some material out of this. Hell yeah! That's the coolest thing! You shrug, closing the book. You tuck it under your arms with the large biography book and left the area, returning to where Crow is settled. Welcome welcome back, Locke. Have you found anything useful for your paper? It took a while. Nothing caught my eye from the books but this one. I raised the large book and showed it to Crow. The Queen herself. That's pretty interesting. What kind of paper are you going to make out of it? I was thinking maybe about how a tyrant royal turned good, but was punished regardless for her actions. How's that sound? Crow was silent for a few seconds, making you tilt your head. Maybe he didn't hear you correctly. Wait. You okay there, Crow? That actually sounds nice, Clock. Can I ask what's the inspiration? Oh, um, well I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation back in the greenhouse. So maybe I could base off some things here. Is that so? That's very smart of you, Clock. Why, thank you. Did a little bow, tipping your imaginary hat as you did. Crow chuckles at your silly gesture before you two settled down in your seats. Cool. And I can read about medieval torture. Skim through the book, taking a few notes here and there for important bits you could use. Feeling your wrist aching a bit, you stop scribbling and stretched out your arms. A few squeaks of satisfaction escaping your lips as you can feel the efforts of your stretch. Oh, another crow CG. At the corner of your eye, you notice how crow's eyebrows tend to furrow as he goes through his books. Ah, that's new, right? I don't think that was in the original game, was it? He feels like shaking from underneath the table. The occasional tapping of his pen fills the quiet library. He took a peek on his supposedly report, supposedly report paper, expecting some few words written on it, but instead, you're met with a blank sheet void of words, or even a droplet of ink. 
You're starting to worry. Writer's block. He seems restless about something. Uh, tap his shoulder. Crow jolts in surprise, his eyes wide open upon the sudden contact. His legs stop shaking as he turns his full attention to you. I yes? Is something the matter, Clock? Are you alright, Crow? Yes. I'm alright. What makes you say that? You seem stressed. Let me guess. Writer's block? You can say that. Crow lets out a nervous laugh. Then he went silent, his eyes returning to staring down on his blank sheet of paper. Silence is quite suffocating, the air now a bit awkward. Your will to write dissipates and was replaced by your concern over the male beside you. This author uses the word male a lot. <laughs> I, I don't I don't mind it. I guess it's just a little I don't know, it's just kinda of funny to me seeing male like so much. <laughs> say dude. Just say the dude next to you. I know it's it sounds funny, but it's so good. Dude is like the best word ever, dude. Say, I've got a bit of a scenario for you to play along with, Clock. Huh? Huh? Not femboy, I didn't say that. Crow's previous gloomy attitude was replaced by a playful tone, facing his body towards you with his pen sat da set down, discarding his thoughts from the paper. Sudden change of demeanor caught you by surprise, but he did not spare you a moment to question him as he raised a finger. I'll accept fem dude for him. Imagine yourself living in the same time as the Queen that you were given the chance to actually befriend her even though you came from nothing. You often question how you managed to befriend the queen herself. She's been nothing but kind to you, often inviting you to her parties and giving you the fanciest gifts ranging from dresses to jewelries. Now here comes my first question. What do you think of the queen? Um... See her as a friend? I think nothing of her. She's highly suspicious. Let's be real. She's highly sus. I think a lot of writers say male, at least I do. I don't know. It was actually funny, because I was on Twitter, and um, I was reading this thing, and a bunch of, like, they were talking about how incels call women females a lot. Um, males and females are the scientific term, right? That's, like, the scientific, like, coded term. I, I'm not a fan of it, honestly. Like, sure, it works, but it just feels so dry. Ugh. Like, it just feels really dry. There's so many other words you can use. Just personally speaking. As wise man once said, I'm a dude, she's a dude, he's a dude, we're all dudes. Exactly. But she's highly sus. Your brows arched in mere confusion and mild irritation from the thought of the what-if scenario given to you. Isn't it a bit suspicious that the queen, literally the queen herself, started being all nice to me? Maybe she has something to ask from me. A mere commoner. You look up to observe Crow's facial expression, his gaze averted with his breath held, smile he had on before he's now completely wiped off his face as he sinks in the words that came from your mouth. That would make total sense. I'd have my guard up too. He He's referring to himself, by the way, since he's, like, rich. Which brings me to the follow-up scenario. Crow takes a breath, almost contemplating his next words before speaking. What if one day you decided to go out of her palace, wanting to either do groceries or even visit your family? There's where... And there is where you see a group of people. They're all mad, each throwing one profanity to another. Upon coming closer, it was about the queen. Decide to come closer. You decide to come closer. They're in a heated debate, but the loudest one, a farmer, loudly proclaims on how the queen betrayed them. How the queen is nothing but a greedy higher up, using the commoner's hard working labor for her to throw parties, leaving them starving. Then the other side speaks up, a woman, saying that the farmer is wrong, and that the queen has been nothing but good to them, providing enough gold and food to keep them afloat. A child came and held on to the woman's leg, confirming her words, as if it weren't if it weren't for the queen, the children wouldn't have homes. There you soon realize that they're a group of nuns, and behind them is an orphanage, a few children peeking through the windows as they try to comprehend what is going on and why they are screaming. Having had enough of the lot of the fight, you return to the castle, queen's castle. But just when you thought you escaped the circulating argument about the queen, you hear a few whispers from nobles along the hallway. The queen is nothing but a fraud. She's nothing but a selfish bitch. She is doing nothing but bringing misery to the people around her. She doesn't fit. She's not fit to be a noble. But that's pretty odd, isn't it? They're the same group of nobles who the queen helped and tried to stop war from raging. Why are they talking about her? 
Is there something you aren't aware of about the Queen? Or are they doing it out of pure hatred? He opened his eyes, the light still absent with his blue orbs as he focuses his gaze on your own. He leans a bit back, his form straight and firm. Now, here's where you come in, Clock. Which side do you believe in? The Queen who has been nothing but kind to you? Or the rumors circulating around her of being a neglectful noble, a selfish woman, a tyrant? He says the word tyrant, tyrant with so much venom, he spat it out like ven poison in his teeth. He thought long and hard on his little scenario, multiple thoughts swirling in your head. This all seems so complicated. Take your time. It's fine for you not to respond. Just tell me. But I would love to hear your answer, Clock. I... So, personally speaking, I think, personally, the nun carries a lot of weight. I think the fact that someone like the nun and the children, children don't tend to lie, you know. Now, sure, she is obviously still enjoying herself. She's not super humble, you know. She's not living on the streets. She hasn't given up her whole fortune as the queen. But that doesn't mean she's not helping. And, um, you know, that's, that's what matters. That's what matters, actually trying to do the right thing. So I still believe in the queen. You gotta give people also some... Like, that's why... I, I don't want to get too political or anything. But uh, people do need to have nice things. So also... And while she is the queen, obviously she has a lot of nice things. The fact that she's spending a lot of money on an orphanage is pretty nice too. Still believe in the queen. I believe in the queen. You do. I do. Even if rumors say that she's a bad person... Even if she's the cause of so many people suffering under her reign. That's the loophole. It's just baseless rumors. If I want the truth, isn't it better to ask straight from the Queen? If she is aware that she's causing people much suffering, then I'd rather take it knowing that she was aware, proceeds to be honest with me rather than to lie to me. For a moment, Crow was silent. His hands nestled on his lap. You couldn't see them, but he took notice of the way his shoulders trembled, his eyes gleaming. Is he about to cry? Did that just give me a lot of points for him? <laughs> Oh god, I didn't mean to. C Crow, you're... You're too trusting. You know that clock? That could attract potential danger. Well, I just did what you told me to do, and that's answering your scenario. His playful demeanor came back quick, as if to he did not just make up the most gut-wrenching scenario known to man. He laughs, holding his chest as he wipes a straight tear away from the corner of his eye. What was the sudden scenario question for, anyway? I just thought it would be a good idea for my paper. Am I right? I... You have to admit, it was a good idea. I could probably entertain your teacher for quite a bit. Can't believe you let me go through that brain exercise just with this silly paper of ours. Well, better get to writing, Clock. We're almost running out of time. What? But what about you? Your paper is still blank. If I could make up that silly scenario, then I can absolutely make up another one on a whim. Plus, your, your response is enough to fill in my little writer's block, so I'd like to thank you for helping me. Arr, you're so good when it comes to writing stories, Crow. You should be a writer. I'll think about your suggestion. Stretching out your arms, letting out a sigh of relief, looking at your paper that you made as you skimmed through it one last time. You were too caught up in the conversation with Crow, you nearly forgot about the worn book you brought along. Picked it up and started flipping through the first pages. Torture devices. Execution devices. Why the fuck are you reading this again? You turn to another page, and on it is a well sketch of a tall and bulk man, half of his face covered by a hood, while a large axe is settled behind him. His arms are filled with scars, while around his neck is a chained collar. He looks like those killers you often see in slasher films. Underneath the illustration it reads, Executioner. <laughs> He's got that dog collar, just like Soul, right? Some execu executioners were feared by the public, but the rest respected them. But mostly, people shun them for their field of work. The old times sure were brutal, you mutter under your breath. Closing the book, you then stacked it on top of the other books you and Crow borrowed. Soul reincarnated? Does that mean Mary Antoinette is, is Crow reincarnated? <laughs> Handing out your paper to Crow, he gladly accepts it and stacks it on top with his own paper. Shall we? Shall we head back? You nod along after you finish stacking the books you borrowed for the librarian of her assistance to get. I can't wait for the day to end. Same here. Crow chuckles as you and him left the library. Stop that, Lynn! You sick fetishist. 
The day eventually came to an end. A few rays of the sunset light shine through the hallways as you and Crow walk through the hallway. Do you have anything else to do today, Clock? Well, I have to do some quick grocery shopping before I go home. Ah, well in that case, would you mind me accompanying you? Really? It's fine if you don't- if you don't ha if you have other things to do. Like, look for Brittany and the others? Not really. Besides, Daryl's after, after class practice. Same with Geo. As for Brittany and Jess, they're catching up on their business proposal. But don't you also need to catch up? I can do that to- I can do them tomorrow. I'd like to spend the rest of the day with you, Clock. Your voice got caught up in your throat. You can feel your face heating up. Stupid crow. Stupid feelings. Uh, Alright then. Crow lets out a small cheer. Kind of like a mini jump from that game with an Italian plumber. Wahoo! Made you giggle a little. Without wasting much time, you and Crow head out of the school campus. Sun slowly sets in the horizon after you and Crow finished up buying you some groceries. Crow offered to carry your bags and walk you home all the way back to your apartment, just like the day before. We should do this every day. But don't you live on the other side of the city? Nothing wrong with that. Plus, my space isn't that far from the school anyway, so walking to your apartment and back is nothing to me. Don't tell me you're the kind of person who would travel from one city to another while saying it's walkable. Crow laughs, shrugging his shoulders up, saying, maybe. I love walking, especially during the night, most especially when the stars are out. I kind of agree with that. Stare at, up, stare at him up and down, your eyes often lingering on his hand. Temptation of holding it was gnawing at you, making you fidgety. This doesn't come unnoticed by Crow as he gradually slowed down until he came to a stop, settling down the groceries. He stopped as well, raising a brown concern as he looked at you with keen eyes. Do you feel cold, Clock? No, what makes you think of that? Without much of a warning, he takes both of your cold hands, cupping them in between his large ones as he begins to blow on them. It's a warm breath, causing your, easing your cold fingertips. Your hands are now warm, but they can compare to the heat of your face reaching to the tips of your ears. You keep shivering, so I thought I could warm you up a bit. I'm sorry I don't have a jacket. I, I doubt my vest could do much to help. It's alright, Crow. You don't need to. Your face is all red. Are you cold? Do you want me to hold- do you want to hold my hand during our walk? Uh... Let me hold them. You hang your head down, too flustered to utter a word. Your request got caught in your throat as your shyness overwhelmed you. Rather, you stared at Crow's large hands wrapped around yours, not pulling away nor protesting against it. Crow noticed your averted gaze, your shy demeanor causing his lips to quirk up in a gentle smile. He almost chuckled when he realized how your eyes fixated on your... Wait, what? Fixated on your joined hands. Freeing his right hand, Crow picks the groceries back up, his left hand closed around yours, holding it firmly but gently. I swear he gave you a little squeeze as he tugs you along, continuing on with your walk. Drip. Hmm? Drop. That's odd. Something the matter? I kind of feel something dropping on me. Oh, fuck! What seemed to be a soft drizzle suddenly turned into a wild downpour. That's how rain is sometimes. You and Crow made a run for it, trying your best to keep yourselves dry as Crow shielded your groceries from getting wet. Thankfully, the sight of your apartment complex came to view from a few feet away. A relieved sigh escapes past your lips. You turn to Crow, who was def who's doing everything he could to keep your bat dry, not even caring about the droplets of rain rolling down his cheek and his damp hair that clung to his face. Just a few more steps, Crow. We're almost there. You ran up the road, hearing Crow's heavy footsteps falling behind you. All of a sudden, Crow stops. His head turns to the bushes. His eyes growing wide as he opened his mouth in a near gasp. <laughs> He definitely just saw a soul. He definitely just saw a soul creeping behind them, man. Crow, what's wrong? Oh, um, one sec. Let's get these groceries and you to a cover. Huh? Crow hastily shoves your semi-damp plastic bag towards you, your arms suddenly carrying the weight of your groceries. You blinked a few times in confusion. Crow, wh whoa! Without much warning, Crow lifts you off the ground. With one of his legs, his arms wrapped around your shoulders and the other under your knees, he hoists you up. The shock from your feet leaving the pavement floor causes you to shriek as you clung around Crow's neck, feeling his damp body press against yours. Jericho, what on earth? Crow runs up to your apartment, carrying you like your weight meant nothing to his arms. You seem distracted, your protests going unheard. <laughs> he wanted to... He definitely wanted us all to himself. Once he makes it to your doorstep, he sets you down before turning around and running back the way he came. Get inside the apartment, I'll be right back. 
You gripped your grocery bag tight as you stared at this figure, your heart drumming quite, loud, quite loudly within your chest. Did he just pick me up and carry me all the way to my apartment that easily? He barely even grunted. For someone so lean, you never expected him to actually lift you like a sack of feathers. You start wondering if he works out. You two dazed, head afloat from what just occurred to realize the crow finally came back. You gasped as you took in his entire body, now awfully drenched from head to toe, his hair dripping with water. His shoes sloshed as he walked and his wet clothes clung to his skin. You notice his vest missing, then you spot it in his arms, wrapped around something. Oh, maybe it's like... He saved a cat? Meow. A sound came from the bundle that he carried in his arms, causing you to snap out of your thoughts. Did he just get me a free cat? Did I just hear his vest meow? Let's get inside before let's get inside before we get any colder. Wait, you just got me a free cat. Wow, based. Once you and Crow made it inside your apartment, the first thing you did was to grab three different towels. One for you, one for Crow, and one for your new little friend. I couldn't bear to leave him in the cold rain. Poor guy must have gotten abandoned by its mother. Oh, it's, it's so cute! Soba. It's my cat, Soba. Wrapped in the small towel was a tiny black kitten. You know, we should be thankful that my landlord was at his usual desk, right? Pets aren't allowed here. Other than that... Crow paused a bit, understanding where you're coming from. A low chuckle left his lips, scratching his wet cheek. He probably won't appreciate the puddle we made on his doorstep. <laughs> Precisely. You both let out a small, awkward laugh, hoping that you won't get, wouldn't get caught the following day by the cameras around. Shoving the thought aside, you and Crow stare at the kitten now wrapped within the towel, its beady eyes seemingly staring at both of you before breaking into mules and meows. I love cats. You feel your heart melt, and so did Crow's. I'll take care of this little guy for now. You should probably drive, Crow. Ugh, is that okay? I didn't expect to actually end up staying in your place. I won't be long, though. I'll let you get- I'll get out of your hair as soon as I dry up. I honestly don't mind you staying a bit longer. It's not a problem. I don't want you to catch a cold because of me. Well, we'll take turns, then. After I dry up, I'll take care of the kitten next. Let me get you something to change. There really is no need- not, not giving him a chance to protest, you quickly head out to your bedroom. Rummaging through your drawers and cabinets, you try to find something that could fit Crow. Then you remembered the oversized shirt you received during last, sport, last sports day. You never understood as to why everyone needed to buy that shirt, but when you got yours, they ran out of your own size and you had no choice but to accept the shirt that was one size bigger than yours. Taking it out of the drawer, you make your way back. Head back to the living room, seeing Crow who remained still in a spot. Shirt had partly dried and he had taken the kitten into his arms. The little creature was snugly wrapped in its warm blanket, reminding you of a burrito. <laughs> a burrito. The sight of Crow gently holding the kitten pierced a soft spot in your heart. Uh, this view was to die for, and you would have spent a few more seconds admiring it had you not noticed Crow's shoulders shaking from the cold. You're shivering. Nothing I can't handle. Lies. The cat is doing a better job at getting warm than you. Teasingly roll your eyes at Crow as you shove the shirt in another fresh towel in his direction. He chuckles, forced to give up the kitten to you as he accepts the change of clothes. Carrying the kitten in your arms, you lead Crow to your bathroom and he thanks you before stepping in and closing the door behind him. Hearing the tweak of the valve and the familiar sound of the shower running, you remember how Crow shivered all the way to the bathroom. You turn your heater up a bit before settling back down on the couch. You turn your attention to the kitten, it's fur now dry thanks to you and Crow. Small feline looks up to you and meows, its little beady eyes staring up at yours. Put a finger on its head, petting it gently. Meow. You must be hungry. <clears throat> you must be hungry, little guy. You're lucky I went out grocery shopping. Scooping the tiny kitten in your arms, you make your way towards your kitchen. Setting the kitten down on the counter, you rummage through your fridge and cupboards for a clean bowl. Pick up your grocery bag from the floor, placing it on the kitchen table as you look for the almond milk you remember getting. Heating the milk just warm enough, you observe the, observe the kitten as it breaks free from its warm confinement and looks around. I mean, okay, I know cats aren't really supposed to drink, like, actual milk, like cow's milk, but almond milk? I doubt it. I doubt that's not- I feel like that's probably not great still. I usually- we used to buy these little bottles of, like, cat's milk, like, it's supposed to be, like, cat's milk. Like, it's, like, a treat for cats. We're not milking cats. Nobody's milking cats in Canada. It's, like, a 
it's like a little carton and it's like a, in the treat aisle. The cat shivering in fear and caution of the unknown territory, yet remaining curious enough to look around. Setting the warm bowl of milk in front of the cat, you grabbed a chair, patiently waiting as it creeped closer to the bowl. It takes one lap of the milk, then another, then one more before it happily drinks it up. <laughs> I'm not doing that, and no one in Canada is doing that, okay? Nobody's doing that. It's just it's just a treat. A warm smile makes its way to your face. Oh, another CG. Seems you've got yourself all settled in. Yeah, stare at this instead, chat. Stare at this instead. His arms are pretty big there. Who would milk a cat clock? Another cat. <laughs> and uh, Gaylord Fokker, but that's for another story. No. <laughs> you don't remember that part in the movie? He, sa he tells the dad, he's like, oh yeah, I grew up on a farm, a lot of cats. And then he's like, what, did you milk the, did you milk the cats, boy? And he's like, yeah, I had to milk all six teeters. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know that movie? No, that movie's too old for chat. You hear Crow's slightly amused voice and you turn it around to face him. You momentarily stop at the sight of him standing there, wearing the fresh shirt you handed him with a towel around his neck. Now out of its usual braids, his hair was let loose, a few droplets dripping from the semi-dry strands. Thank you for letting me use your bathroom clock. You don't mind me hanging my vest, right? Mikey remembers, okay, based. I don't mind. In fact, I could just hand your stuff to you tomorrow if you'd like. Yeah, Daniel's lying. Uh, Canadians don't do that. We just have them as pets. Crow didn't answer you as he pointed his gaze downwards, dipping his head in an attempt to conceal the slight tint of pink brushing along his cheeks. He rubs his arm, a hint of embarrassment in his voice. Sorry, I didn't think I would end up staying here a bit. But I'm thankful either way. Also, this isn't the first time I've been to your apartment. You've got a nice place. Oh crap, he's actually right. You never really got any visitors, save for your father or your landlord. Other than that, you never had anyone in here until now. And it's Crow too. Just you two. Alone. I'm probably talking too much. You should get changed too. Crow's voice snaps you out of your thoughts, and you look up to realize that he had already picked the kitten up from the counter. Crow holds it in his arms, the feline faintly purring as it snuggles close to his chest, relishing in his warmth. Never thought you'd see the day you'd be jealous over a cat, but here we are. Getting up from your chair, you accompany Crow back into the living room before going to change as well. The sound of the showerhead running fills your ears as you look down on your bathroom's white tiles, observing the water run down towards the sinkhole. The water's heater helped you warm up a bit, but you couldn't help the thought of running thoughts running through your mind. Thoughts that you were mostly consumed by Crow and the cats. Who was going to keep it? Why did he save it? And most importantly, how long is he planning to stay here? You look up seeing his soaked vest and polo hanging on one of the bathroom railings. You should probably throw that in the dryer along with yours right after. You let out a sigh, not wanting to waste any more water and probably spend the next 30 minutes contemplating your life in the shower. You got out, dried yourself, and got yourself dressed. You turn to the living room, finding that Crow had made himself comfortable on your couch with the cat happily settled in his lap as he gives it a few pets. Seeing your, sensing your presence, Crow lifts his head and eyes perk up upon landing on your figure. Another one! Oh, and he's got the cat. Too bad it's covered up by the bar. Welcome back. The cat's starting to relax. It's almost as if it belongs in this place. He chuckles. You made your way to him and you sink in the cat right by his side. Gaze of the cat curled up in his leg and purring away in content. You bit your bottom lip. Cat two, clock zero. <laughs> Have you thought of a name yet? It's our shirt. Actually, no. I'm not. I'm never really good with names. Soba. My, my black cat name, Soba. <laughs> That's what we're going to name him. How about you? Have you thought of a name for it? He tilts his head to the side, awaiting your answer to his inquiry. Give the cat a name. Okay, wait. I There's probably a canon name, so I'll just let Crow name it. Why don't you try to name it? Me? But the names I usually give are quite corny. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Crow scans your face for confirmation. Genuinely seems to think that he wasn't the best person for the task, but you clearly saw that glimmer of hope in his eyes. Are you sure? Of course I am. Are you really, really sure? Yes, Crow. You really rise in mock annoyance before giggling. Seeing that you're not budging from your choice, he sighs in defeat with a little troubled smile on his face. 
Crow glaze, gazes at your ceiling in deep thought. He hums, biting the inner of his cheek as he closes his eyes, taking on the seemingly very serious task of giving the cat a good name. Crow looks down at the kitten in consideration, and its blue eyes mirrored his blue orbs as they stared at each other. Ah, how about Regulus? Regulus? That's right. Harry Potter? What? <laughs> he picks up the cat and lovingly cradles it like a parent to their baby, letting the kitten rest on his right arm and booping its nose as he did so. Boop. Regulus. Named after the brightest star in the Leo constellation. Plus his eyes are blue. Crow turns to you, seemingly excited as he holds the cat in front of you, showing its eyes. You gotta agree, its eyes are a bright shade of beautiful blue, reminding you of sapphire gems. Feline's dark fur accentuates, accentuates its eyes further, helping it pop like a twinkling star in the night sky. You thought it was just like Crow to name the cat after a constellation. You recall how he thought it was corny, but to you it was endearing that Crow manages to leave traces of himself on things. I think Regulus is a beautiful name. You said so Queen Puppy Cat? That was so random. That's so rude. I think Regulus is fine. You can call him Reggie for short. <laughs> and it's a Harry Potter reference too. <laughs> well, yeah, Sirius would have been better, but whatever. You don't think it's too complicated or too corny? Plus, it's a reference. I like the I like the constellation reference. It's good. Corny? Pfft, no. In fact, it's quite it's quite unique. It's quite nerdy. <laughs> it's quite nerdy. <laughs> oh, I love his face, dude. He's so cute. Ah, oh, that's that's so cute. I I'm so happy. I said nerdy. Crow scoffs playfully, pretending to be offended. He blows away a stray hair that got to his face and gives you an incredulous look. Seriously, you laugh, giving him a little nudge of the shoulder. He merely rolls his eyes at your teasing. I mean that in a loving way. I think it's cute how you're nerding out, especially with your fondness for astrology. You lean in Crow's direction, gently petting the kitten in his arms. With your attention on the feline, you did not notice Crow hold his breath at your proximity. Cleared his throat, chuckling. Astrology based. Wait, no, no, no. Which one's which? One's which? Is it astronomy that's like the pseudoscience or astrology that's like actually like the study of the stars? Which one is it? Whatever the scientific one is, like learning the names of stars and stuff, that that is actually so cool. No, no offense to the the people who are like, oh, my star sign is in this month, like stuff like that. Like, astronomy is the science. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Really fucking cool. I love that. I love looking at like star charts and stuff like that. It's so fucking cool. Um, no hate to astrology people. No hate. No hate. Okay, I'm not hating. I just I don't I couldn't care less honestly. <laughs> Well, as long as you think it's cute, especially since this little guy is cute too. Coos at the cat in his arms. Anyway, do you want something to eat? I can heat up some hot pockets we bought. Hot pockets! Pizza pockets! That would be wonderful. Pizza pocket time. The sun had set beyond the horizon hours ago. You could see the sky painted black from your window. The Pillsbury Doughboy upset that you didn't eat more of him. With the rain still pouring just as hard as before, Crow decides to stay a little bit longer to enjoy your company. The kitten sleeps soundly on a nearby makeshift bed that you made together with Crow. I'm just being a hater. <laughs> you sit beside him on the couch, the living room dimly lit with nothing but the television running that what seems to be a slasher film. Okay, hear me out. Why did they have to make the serial killer so hot in this movie? Excuse me. Excuse me! <laughs> Excuse me! What did you just say? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sir, we're watching Chucky. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're watching Chucky and someone says, hear me out. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's clearly a pretty boy with that blonde hair and charming smile. But that makes sense, right? Especially with this killer in the movie. Cunning and charming. He's a good manipulator having to entice people so that he can kill them in the end. Throws the detectives off, right? I guess that makes sense. But they did a good job casting whoever the killer is. He's pretty good. You know the actor? No. How about you? Surprised you don't know him. He's one of the best multi-talented idol in Titus City. Cast your eyes back to the screen and you're greeted by the serial killer's actor. Wow, that's cool. 
They went all out for this. What the hell? Wow, I never knew Chucky could look like this. Golden hair dyed with pink tips. Rose pink eyes that shone brightly. And a smile that was so alluring and magnetic it was hard to tear your gaze away. He almost looks like an actual angel. He knows that he's known as Ares. Besides being an actor, he's also a singer and a model. Wow, sounds like a big shot. I wonder if we'll meet him in the future. Mm-hmm. He's also Jess's favorite actor. Did you know? Jess owns the most, the biggest fan page for this guy and has been recognized by him and many fans. Really, that's quite an achievement. I agree. With a face card like that, how could anyone not fall for him? Don't tell me he's your type. I mean... Uh, um... Oh, really? <laughs> no! You can do better. I didn't even say anything! We know. All the all the boys out there? We know. Crow merely puffed his cheeks, refusing to meet your gaze. Don't tell me he's jealous. That's actually pretty cute. I love his pout. Pouting is like one of the best things ever. Okay, cat! Okay, Lynn. Ugh. Hydrate check. Posture check. Nut. Stretch check. Everything. Nut check. Wait a second, what? Ugh. Good stretches. Make sure you guys get a good stretch in, okay? Should be ending up soon, I think. Don't tell me he's jealous. That's actually pretty cute. I love making... I love making people jealous. It's one of the cutest things ever. Well, there's no way in hell I could even make it to the same level as an idol, so don't you worry your head over it. <laughs> yeah, make sure you whip it out for Rorambe. Do a little twerk for me, okay? Get your stretches in. Room fell silent afterwards with neither of you uttering a word. As the television became background noise, you unconsciously fiddle with your fingers. I feel like this game heavily relies on Greek mythology. Because <laughs> that guy's name was basically Ares, but just not spelt the same way. Same way. You found it difficult to focus on the movie as you start feeling conscious of the male beside you. <laughs> Why didn't they say man? <laughs> ever. Like, Ever. From your peripheral vision, you try to discreetly check up on Crow, only to realize that his whole attention was already on you. Your heart rate races. Hey, Clock, if given the chance, if you could have anything in the world, what would it be? Another one of your little trivia questions, Crow? You laugh lightheartedly, attempting to ease the atmosphere. Yet Crow did not seem to be on board, so you shut yourself up quickly. You, you bit your lips as you felt Crow leaning, again, leaning close to your face, his breath brushing against your cheek. Movie becomes a muffled and incoherent noise as the rapid beating of your heart floods in your eardrums. Why don't you answer first? He chuckles lonely, sending a shiver down your spine. Crow surprises you when he rests his head on your shoulder. The intimate gesture makes your heart stop. Before you could say anything else, he buries his fed in the crook buries his face in the crook of your neck, making you freeze. You prayed he wouldn't hear just how loudly your heart is beating. Dodging the question this time, huh? Well, if I were to have anything in the world, I'd love to have more time. More time to be with you. More time to spend with you. Kind of selfish of me, huh? At this point, you aren't sure if he's talking to you or with himself. You glance at Crow from the corner of your eye, noticing his downcast gaze. He smiled at himself, but all you could see was that desperate expression he failed to suppress. He did not dare ask what was wrong. At a loss for words, you chose to remain silent. You stayed in that position with Chrome for what felt like a minute. The hurt on his beautiful face were playing in your head. He swallowed and lifted a hand, gently placing it on the back of his head. You relaxed when Crow f when you felt Crow ease up on your touch. Taking that as a sign, you proceed to stroke his hair, brushing along his now soft and dry locks between your fingers. I should probably get going. Already. Pulls away and looks, you at, looks at you straight in the eyes. Multiple swirls of emotions fill his dull orbs. Drowsiness, uncertainty, longing. With one last exhale, Crow finally gets off of you and stands up. A few groans escaping his lips as he stretches his limbs. <clears throat> With his hands on his hips, he gives you a smile. You couldn't shake off the feeling that it, was done, that it was done just to reassure you. The rain is slowing down a bit. Plus, it's getting quite late. I haven't contacted my relatives yet, so they might really be worried by now. Are you sure you don't want to stay the night? 
You want to say it so bad. You really, really want to, but you couldn't. You shouldn't. Clench the fabric of your shirt above where your painfully beating heart lies. You're probably right. Let me get your clothes from the dryer. I'll see you out. Thank you, Clock. You're the best of the best. Are you sure you'll be fine, Crow? Mm-hmm. I already called my driver. I'll probably get an earful from him, but that's all right. They're probably going to question me about what question me about Regulus, but I'll think of it in a I'll think of an excuse. Is this like a shadow behind him? Like, is that normally there? I'm sorry I couldn't keep him with me, Crow. No, it's all right. In fact, I already know who would be the perfect cat owner for them. With the kitten cradle in his arms, Crow did a mock-up face of a grumpy person, exaggerating his expression with his cheeks puffed and shoulders raised. You can only make a wild guess on the mysterious entity identity. Is it gonna be Geo? That's hilarious. It's a shame that your apartment had a no pets policy. The fact that you know absolutely no one who could take care of a cat. A kitten. After talking it out with Crow, he decided to take the kitten with him. Thankfully, you had a few spare boxes lying around, and you gave one for Crow to place the kitten in. Today's been fun, Crow. His brows raised in mild surprise, then a, small, a soft smile painted his features. With his dominant hand, he ruffles the top of your head, messing your hair a bit and earning him a chuckle. Hey now. I had fun too, Clock. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this just looks so weird, I'm sorry. I don't like it. <laughs> I know they're trying to keep it ambiguous, but it's... <laughs> You move to close the door, but stop by the sudden sensation of something soft landing on your forehead. I just thought it was funny. The, the ah uh, face. It looks like a ah. Uh. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, the MC's like ah. Uh. Your eyes travel up, realizing that Crow had just given you a tender kiss near your brow. While your face heated up, your brain short-circuited at the feeling of his soft lips lingering on your skin. Good night, clock. Gives you a casual wave, Regulus peeking out of his box to, box to give you one last look as if bidding you goodbye before you finally closed your door. That... that tease! What? Aunt. Tch. She's finally back, huh? Excuse me? Excuse me? Come on, Regulus. Let's go home. To be contondered. Dude, we're on like fucking file se Dude, we're on number eight. Okay. Um, now it's super late. I believe we got all the CGs. I believe we got all the CGs. We did. So we got all the CGs. Others. We did get all the CGs for others. These are really good too. These are like really good. Even the executioner. The cats. Oh, it's so cute. I love cats. Chad, I love cats. Yeah. Kill me. Shoot me. Shoot me. It should have been me. It's really cool. See, I really love this CG. This was really awesome to get that CG. Really happy with it. This one's good too, obviously. <laughs> Him sitting. Yeah, that one's good too. Yeah, Hugo's definitely the hot guy. I, I like you I like Hugo and Geo the most. Right. Why are they better than the actual robots? Ginger loves them. Ginger's like, give me a game with just Hugo and Geo. <laughs> just give me a game. Image three of six locked. Aw oh, man, I missed one CG. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna act like that we didn't get I'm gonna act like uh, we got that. I'm gonna act like we got that CG, okay? I'm gonna act like we did get that CG, okay? And then there's also the glossary character page. Where you can check everyone out. Check their height and age. I am going to leave this because that's a lot of reading and I don't wanna do I don't wanna do any more. I'm tired, chat. It's uh, currently 12.30 a.m. I've got to edit this, and I'm going to go to bed as soon as I'm done all that and upload it for tomorrow. So, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll be back with more of the kid at the back whenever 
they updated it again. Um, if you want to play the NSFW version yourself, please go right ahead and buy the game yourself on itch, okay? I'll leave the link to the creator's page down below, um, and you can buy the game there and play the NSFW scenes for yourself. Um, like I said, the creator doesn't want anyone streaming or streaming or posting on YouTube the NSFW versions, blurred or not, so please respect their wishes as well, okay? Just help a creator out, man. Pay for the game, you know? They put a lot of work into this. It's just them. They're awesome, okay? Um, they're awesome, yeah. So, seriously. I think their name is, yeah, Fantasia Kit. So, anyways. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't know who I am, my name is Clock. If you forgot. And we play game a lot of games just like this. Visual novels, dating sims, uh, indie horror games all the time. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, if you could clock that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. And clock that subscribe button if you're new here, because I'm awesome. Dee. <laughs> if you laughed once during this video, you're going to enjoy the my other videos, seriously. So, let's try to get 20k before the end of the year. That'd be amazing. If I hit 20k before the end of the year, I'll literally cry. <laughs> of happiness. Tears of joy. Because um, that'd be pretty amazing. Already, though, I'm pretty humble about it. Ow. Guys, it's been ex almost exactly one year since I've kind of started popping off on YouTube. And we went from literally 200 subs to 18,000. So, I'm really amazed by the growth I've had on YouTube. And even on Twitch, too, it's been amazing. I really appreciate it, okay? Thank you all so much. You guys are awesome. And I just want to make you guys happy with daily uploads and playing games you guys ask me to. I'm sorry if uh, I don't play the games you guys tell me to all the time. There's just so many games to play. So many games to do for you guys and so many new games at the same time but just know i do read every single comment i do try to take every suggestion okay and uh with that anyways thank you clock it out have a good night peace